Hello, hello everyone. This is welcome back to the second part of our Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition campaign, Burn It Down. Uh, the second part of the arc known as Where the Players Play. Um, we had some technical difficulties at the beginning of last episode, for which I deeply apologize for. Those have been resolved, so the players should be audible now uh, for, the, for, the, for the entire game. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and bring them onto the screen. Hello! Ugh. Yes, so um, uh, you may notice that uh, our the player of Alex Mars, uh, James, is not uh, visible on camera. That's because due to a shutdown-related emergency, thank you, glorious government, he cannot be uh, at his computer, but he is with us uh, literally on the road. <laughs> So if there's any background noise or uh, or connection issues, uh, we're going to be explaining that as him having a Malkavian issue. Uh, nice. <laughs> and so uh, I'll have fun with that. Uh, and who knows what sta what toll it will take on his mental state. Um, but who cares? Indeed. Since uh, it wasn't audible last time, uh, I'd like everyone uh, to introduce themselves and give a brief physical description of their character, even though we do have the lovely fa uh, lovely art by uh, McKenna on the edge on the lower left of the screen there. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with uh, James uh, and Alex. Hey guys, sorry for the, the lag. I have to uh, because of the background noise, I'm gonna have to uh, navigate to uh, the mic button each time I need to speak. So Alex Mars is a Mulcavian. He's been in Atlanta most of his, uh, well, really most of his, his life and all of his vampire life. Uh, he is a relatively famous trance house and uh, techno DJ. Um, he has worked with people like Danger Mouse before and some sometime in the near recent past, he was, uh, he was embraced. Alex is an older looking guy. He's uh, he's got a baby face, but he does have white hair and a white beard and white um, mustache, closely trimmed, dark black eyes, uh, and sort of a Mediterranean complexion. Everything that you can see below the neck is covered in tattoos, very colorful tattoos. Um, he always has a pair of headphones around his neck because he is always mixing. Hmm. And uh, he tends to wear sort of downplayed clothing, even though it's well known that he's quite wealthy. He wears T-shirts and blue jeans and that sort of thing. Not overly ostentatious. I dig it. And let's go to Willow Walsh, please. Hi. Willow Walsh is played by me, Mo. <laughs> um, what she looks like is she is a uh, young appearing lady with the um, mid-90s fashion of horribly ble bleached blonde hair and uh, very dark eyebrows uh she has a visible limp and is a little standoffish people tend to notice upon first meeting her her um her occupation is she's in security these days she used to be a larcenist but that's in the past and she's changed yeah she would never use her powers for evil never. anyway Cadence. Let's hear about Cadence. All right. So I'm McKenna, and I play our gang girl, Cadence. Um, she is a short, uh, young-looking woman, uh, was embraced just out of her teens. Um, her hair is shoulder-length and always messy. Um, she wears... Uh, T-shirts and, and jeans that are probably covered in stains. Um, has a scarf that is also tattered that she never takes off, and a hat, not unlike this one. Uh, she, she is a, what, what is the term, a mass hole? Yes, she is a definite mass hole. <laughs> Excellent. I love it. I lived in Boston for a year, so I guess I can claim, you know, partial lineage. Anyway, Madison. <laughs> 
Do you want to claim partial lineage, though? You know, let's just... It's a stacking effect. It gives me a bonus to my uh, my confrontation skills. <laughs> so you're just trying to put as many, like, regional dialect lineages on your character sheet. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, got a min-max. Anyway, Madison. Got what's up okay. with Madison? Okay, uh, so Madison looks like he was probably embraced late, late 20s, early 30s. Um, very, very immaculate uh, appearance. Close-cropped hair very carefully trimmed kind of uh, like goatee, partial beard, uh, always dresses very, very sharply, carries himself very stiffly, very formally, like clearly somebody who was raised in, in before being embraced, even raised to, to be a very kind of formal focused sort of person. Um, he's fairly normal looking in that respect. Like doesn't really almost conspicuously among kindred doesn't like bear obvious marks of like a particular time period or a particular like style that would kind of give away uh, when he may have been embraced. Uh, and beyond that, I mean, you've, you've got art and he looks very much like that art. Fantastic. All right. So when last we left you all, uh, uh, Willow and Alex were up in a Buckhead uh, condominium a complex uh, mm -hmm. in, in separate condos. Yes. Uh, the Alex is in, I believe, his, his essentially permanent haven, uh, and Willow is in a guest room. Uh, now, Madison and Cadence, however, are in the, the Coterie's actual domain that has been afforded mm -hmm. to them by the Baron uh, in the uh, Blessed Night Revival Hall, uh, which is a uh, converted dance hall uh, that served as the haven of the previous coterie that, that tended to this domain, uh, who were apparently a bunch of Jesus freaks. Um, so, yeah. uh, um, right now, the sun is still in the sky. Uh, and Alex, you are having that dream again. It's, it's a, you don't have this dream every night. Uh, but it's frustrating because every time you have this dream, one of the first things you realize about it is that you always forget this dream. Um, right now, you're standing on a narrow strip of land. Uh, perdition is below you. Uh, you know, we can go as as, as dark as a, as a lake of fire can be. Uh, you have stones tied to your limbs, all four of them. Uh, and behind you is that damn snake. The snake is the common factor. It's the thing that's always there, always harrying you, always snapping at you. The, the surroundings can change, but the snake is the constant. That damn three-eyed snake. And it's pushing you forward, slithering, forcing you to teeter on this very narrow strip of land above this lake of burning pitch and ash. And as it begins to snap at you closer and closer, you begin to feel the weight of the sun start to lessen. And then you slowly realize the same thing that you've always realized, but once again, always forget, is that even though the snake is snapping at you, and you're always trying to avoid it, and you will get bit from time to time, you, you realize that the snake isn't trying to bite you. It's trying to, to snap off the bonds that is tying the stones to you. And just as you're having this revelation, and just as you're realizing time and time again, you always have this revelation, and you always forget it, and then your eyes open, and everything that came in the day is a foggy nothingness. I, uh, Alex leaps out of his, his bed, and with the, the memory of the dream fading, um, Alex would never think to write this down. That's not how he remembers. Mm -hmm. uh, he is going to make a beeline for his mixing station and try to mix that message into a song, try to encode it 
into a, a, a set of musical bars that he will somehow remember later. By the time the, 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 the software loads up and the project is, is initialized, you have no idea. Like, you have no memory. There's no scrap of thought. And it's just... every You know that something happened. You know because you just feel this frustration. And you know that means you're going to have a very bad night. Yeah, so when when his uh, when his cleaning crew or, or his morning crew, whoever it is that generally checks on him in the morning comes in, uh, Alex is going to be standing completely naked in front of his mixing stations, covered in claw marks where he's torn at his flesh during this dream with just an, an intense, seething anger on his face. And the colors, they're just flaring in your, your mind. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to, to focus. And that's how we're going to explain you being a little out of it this game. But anyway, everyone else, I would like... Uh, I'm going to do this roll for you, uh, but everyone else, I would like to roll a rouse check for your nightly hunger. Remind me how that works again? Just a so straight d10, you, right? you roll a straight d10. If you roll a 6 or above, your hunger does not increase. If it's a, a five or below, your hunger goes up by one. Got that failure. Oh boy. Yep. Went up by one. Okay. I passed. You passed. I'm, I'm hangry. <laughs> so I believe, <laughs> as of last game, Cadence, you were already at hunger too, uh, because mm -hmm. you hadn't sated yourself fully. So what that means, and and Alex, you also failed. Uh, so everyone's hunger is at two. The yeah. beast is nipping at your heels it's it, it's clawing at your throat you are thirsty you are hungry it's manageable it's not intruding on your thoughts over much but you could eat anyway after a little bit of time after some some preparations the the four of you get in contact with one another and mm -hmm. you you come to the conclusion that you all need to, to really have a serious sit down meeting. Um, and probably the, the, the place that you guys think, since it is in your territory and it's the one place that you guys know is sort of suited for such things, you all agree to make your way to the midnight, uh, the blessed night revival hall. Um, uh, so cadence and uh, Madison, are you guys doing anything to spruce up the place or, or make any changes while the uh, before your your friends arrive? She's gonna trust that the other people actually know how to decorate. Fantastic. Yeah, as long as it's functional for a meeting, I'm gonna try to change shit as little as possible for now. Okay. Because I don't want to make it super obvious that we're you know squatting in this abandoned church. <laughs> I love it. There's a suitable like like circle of chairs and and beanbag chairs and hammocks and whatnot that you know where where they obviously like gathered round and talked about Christ. Um, Drank the Kool Aid. Indeed, there is there is in fact one of those big orange jugs uh, on a table. Uh, it's it's empty at the moment, but it is right there. Um, Madison passes by and is like, oh, well, I guess we know where they went. <laughs> anyway so um yeah uh alex and willow uh do you guys ride down together how are you guys getting there oh well he's my ride for right now okay so are you are you going with one of your one of your drivers there alex yeah i'll have one of uh one of the when when you see alex it's clear that he's not in the jovial mood that he was in last night. Um, he calls for his driver. Um, he speaks in, in urgent, hushed tones. And you hear him say, like, I want I want this particular driver. I want, I, I need somebody that I can trust. Uh, he seems just kind of off compared to how he was last night. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I sp although she's not that great at picking up tones, any sort of curtness in your voice is enough to like she notices it and so okay. during that ride she's just applying bronzer and like <laughs> great yeah so the driver shows up 
uh, they he, the car arrives uh, in the in the sort of the parking deck of the of the area where you guys have a um, uh, you guys don't come out the main entrance because that's you know gauche and dangerous. Uh, but there is a, a basically a side parking deck entr- exit that uh, the driver pulls up to, and you get in the car, you tell him where you need to go, and he proceeds to get you there. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm I'm uh, I'm assuming some competence on your uh, your drivers uh, that they're at least used to sort of the general um, gist of things. So they don't actually he does not actually drop you right off at the revival hall in case there's anyone watching or anyone following. Uh, but he essentially stops about a block away um, uh, at a uh, at a bar that's close to the where the address is so you guys cool. can... and as, as soon as before alex will get out um scott because of the distraction because mm-hmm. of what's going on and me having clearly uh screwed up on my nightmares sort of thing mm-hmm. um i'll leave it up to you does alex think to pull his hood up and put his sunglasses on before he gets out at that bar let me take a look at the relevant character sheets uh, yep. let's see what, what, what might, how, I'll give you a roll on that, actually. I will give you a wits etiquette roll, uh, with two hunger die, and we'll see. I do have high wits etiquette. You do indeed have decent wits etiquette. Come on, man, put on the ray band. You get three successes. Uh, so yeah, you you're you're just about to get out of it, and like it's like muscle memory. Um, you 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 actually you, you don't process that you're doing it, but some survival instinct pulls the hoodie up uh, and hides your face. Outstanding. Man, ooh, two hunger die. That could that could have gone. A different way um but anyway so yeah you guys uh you guys uh you know do the do the looking at the menu checking out the scene a little bit and then like ah, no we're gonna go somewhere else and start walking down uh walking uh do going around the corner mm-hmm. um um can you describe what the outward um uh, look of this place is is it like one of those shopping malls. No, or, uh, no, this mall. is. Yeah, this is a standalone building. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, it's a one-story. Um, it's a one-story like a, like the size of a large restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but just it has uh, you know, windows that have like moons and crosses. Paint like like painted on. Uh, there are heavy curtains uh, that yeah, block like off the, the view to the inside. Uh, there's a yeah. there's a uh, you know a, a you know fairly chintzy uh, you know fluorescent sign uh, that's flickering that has the name of the place. And it just on it just says Blessed Night Re- Revival. Night, Blessed or Night Revival say? Hall. Just the blinking or like light or or like letters not on so it's just like blessed no no it's it's one of the no no it's it's one of those ones that has like a sheet of plastic with like a lamp the 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 vinyl uh, sticker and a light behind it so it's it's flashing in and out uh now Mm. i would like uh you mo and i will do this for you uh alex uh to give me a wits awareness roll including your hunger dice as part of the pool. And just tell me how many successes you have. Six, six and above. One no hunger dice. Okay. Um, Alex, as you're rounding the corner and you sort of see this abomination of a haven uh, that, that you are... <laughs> Uh, you are approaching, uh, your eye is drawn across the street. Um, uh, basically, you see a guy uh, who's just sort of standing outside of a um, 
of like a, a, a walk up ATM. Um, he's like leaning against it. Uh, and you don't, nothing, nothing about his appearance or his demeanor or anything like that is odd, but you see him every now and then his eyes go to the revival hall. And as you guys approach it, he starts to look at you just with his, just by turning his head. There's no like change in his, in his, he doesn't like start up or anything, but you see his eyes taking note. And do I notice that, or is that specifically Alex? Uh, Alex notices that you you see the guy, but you don't notice mm -hmm. anything. You don't, don't you don't see his eyes. I say to Alex, just sort of under my breath, like, "Oh man, oh, get a load of that sign." I'm gonna just very very gently um, tap uh, Willow's elbow and. Uh, in, in the subtlest way that I can, and I have pretty high uh, social roles, so hopefully <laughs> this will work. I'm just going to very subtly kind of tick my head in his direction so that she can mark him too. Okay. Yeah, you're able to do um, that. And so. we're going to walk right past the entrance to the building. We're not going to go in. Let's go, like, around. Okay. We're so going to go like, around. Around the, around the block. We'll jump some fences. It'll... Okay. It'll be better. All right. Um, yeah, you do that. You walk right past. Um, the guy stops. Hey, Scott, I am also going to text. Um, uh, oh, boy. Characters' names. Uh, uh, D Dylan's Madison. character's name. Madison. Madison. I'm going to immediately text Madison and let him know. Okay. Smart choice. What, what exactly do you tell him? I'm going to say... Uh, Matt, or I'm not going to use his name. I'm sure that we've we've got mm -hmm. each other's dead box names. Um, I'm going to say, gent out front looks like he's interested in our real estate. Okay. <laughs> All right. So very shortly after this happens, uh, Madison, you get that text. Um, Willow, I'm going to ask for a Dex larceny roll from you. Sure. Uh, to uh, to manage getting uh, getting around without uh, uh, jumping over some fences, basically. And uh, I'll I'll let this carry for Alex. Let basically let him, let her roll do for you. Do you have? Hold on. Yeah, you don't have you don't have any larceny, Alex. So you can't really help her help her. But she's all right. So when there is a success on a hunger dice, okay. So uh, I have. Uh, one success on a normal, and then two successes both on hunger dice. Okay, so one, uh, just a refresher about hunger. Um, normally, hunger dice work as dice. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, when they matter is when you fail a roll, and okay. you get and you get ones on your hunger dice. They also matter when you roll two tens, and any of those tens are a hunger die. In this. In V5, mm -hmm. uh, specialties, are those like 10, if you get a 10, you roll again? I believe they're extra dice. <laughs> but let me okay. double check. Because one of those uh, war was a 10, and I have a larceny specialty for break-in. Okay. Was, that hunger was, the t was the 10 a hunger die? Yes. Okay. Was there another 10? No. It okay. was 8, 8. Then that then then you do not get a you do not get a critical and therefore you do not get a messy critical, okay. uh, which is the be almost the best of both world both worlds. Uh, but yeah, well, how many successes total did you get? Three. Oh, then that's more than enough. Yeah. So Madison, what do you do when you get this text? I go. <sighs> God damn it! And then I stand up. <laughs> uh, I'm going to see if there's anywhere where I can get a look. I mean, he said across the street, so mm -hmm. I don't know how many streets are across the street from uh, us. There's, uh, there, it, it, this place is on Memorial Drive. Um, uh -huh. so it's, it's a fairly, it's like a, it's like a, t a four lane road. Uh, so there's so two streets across from this building. There's, yeah, there's four lanes of traffic across from this building. Right. 
Yeah. What I mean is that there are two across froms yes. from this building. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to just roll a d10 real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there's, there's, there are no doors on the side of the, of this there are building. There windows? There are, there are no doors or windows on the side of this building. Oh, there well, then I'm just going to look through the windows that I can look through. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I'll use heightened senses just so I don't really have to Okay. Yeah. like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Heightening up your senses, um, uh, you're able to do a quick peek. Uh, and, and you, you see this gentleman, he's, you know, reasonably well-dressed, uh, and he's just sort of leaning up against an ATM, uh, and you see his eyes just sort of flicker, you know, towards the, uh, the building, uh, with some regularity. Hmm. Does he do anything else? Does he interact with his phone? Does he... Yeah, he's, he's, he, he looks at his phone, he, he looks like he's just kind of on his phone. Um, so yeah. he's like leaning up against the ATM, like mm-hmm. sideways. Yeah. I'm gonna try to read his phone. Okay. <laughs> All right. With heightened senses. Yeah, that is definitely going to be uh, a. Uh, let's see here. We're gonna go with wits uh, uh, investigation roll. Okay. And I have to check if I get. Yeah, so I add my aspects rating to this. Yes, you do. Cool. So this is four die roll. With two hunger dice. Yep. There we go. Uh, One success and no uh, relevant hunger results. Um, you only get like a uh, uh, a basic flash of it. Um, you basically see, uh, for just a moment, you see like he's open to a texting window, uh, and you see basically his last response of "Yeah, man, I'll check it out." Okay. It's at this time that uh, one of the like the back door. Uh, which is <laughs> yeah, which is is pretty pretty well secured uh, against uh, outside intrusion. There's like there's like a, 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 there's a good lock bar. It's very 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 well secured against uh, people trying to open it. Uh, but you do hear some knocking. I'm assuming you like knock on the door and and start to jiggle it, right? Yeah, I'll probably give it a give it a couple of knocks. Wait. Yeah. If that doesn't produce anything, I'm gonna start to open it. Yeah, so okay. I'll go investigate, I guess. Yeah, you, uh, you, you. Someone's trying to get in. Um. Now, now, ha- Madison, did you, yeah, did you talk to Cadence at all about what's going on? He was turning back to say something when she had already gotten up and left. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, c- god damn it. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, someone's trying to get into your uh, back door here, Cadence. Hello. Uh, do I recognize her? Yeah, you hear a you this? hear a mus- a muffled, recognizable voice through it. I uh, put my face because uh, I don't want to be like a yelling, mm-hmm. considering that we just went around to avoid sure. the dude. So I like put my face a little close up to it, uh, the door, and I'm just like, it's it's Willow. Oh, 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 okay. And she starts fumbling with whatever lock is on the door or deadbolt or combination thereof. Uh, there's a couple locks that you can undo. Um, however, there is one very large uh, uh, like crossbar that has like a, a lock on it that you have no key for. Okay, well... Um... She's got, I think I said she had lock picks, and she definitely has some dots and larceny, so she's going to okay. try to jimmy that thing open. All right, give me a dex larceny roll. I'll give you a plus okay. one die for your equipment. Awesome. Oh, sisters. And, <laughs> and include Is your hunger. Hmm? What now? Is this the masquerade equivalent six. of fighting Gazebo? Like, we have to fight our own Haven as the first major encounter? <laughs> no, it's just, you know, 
<laughs> little complication uh, since you don't want to come in through the open front door. Two. That is two successes. Mm -hmm. Um, none of them on hunger die. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, you're able to jimmy it, and it pops, uh, and you're able to open the back door. And... Take that lock. <laughs> pulls the crossbar out and swings the door open and waves. Hey. Well, I, I come in, and then as I come in, I, like, turn around immediately to look at the inside of the door, because while she was unlocking it, like, I kept hearing, lock, lock, the jiggling all the way down, and mm -hmm. I'm like, good on them, that's a, that's an appropriate amount of locks for, uh, for this type of building, good on them, shame they're dead, I don't say, <laughs> but I think. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so you come in, uh, the part of the building is sort of, like, a very much a back uh, like, like there's a couple of offices that have been converted into uh, day sleep uh, capable rooms. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the posters of Jesus are just freaking everywhere. Um, and then there's this <laughs> big open common area filled with like comfortable chairs and this hammocks and bean bags and like there's there's a couple musical instruments uh here and there uh you know there's a small sort of uh like you pass like a small kitchen area mm -hmm. um and it looks like it looks like a very chill hangout church the light the lighting isn't great um, it, you know, they probably had a lot of, a lot of chill midnight masses here. Um, but yeah, this is what, this is what confronts the two of you. Yeah, it's kind of freaky. Like each time I pass another picture of Jesus, like I touch it a little and I'm like, one, two. Oh, three. you'll go insane. What? <laughs> and those aren't even the weirdest ones. So uh, Alex will come in and make a beeline, uh, probably directly to the pulpit, <laughs> where he will start setting up. Uh, he's got his back top or his, uh, his backpack. He'll start setting up his his laptop and uh, his mixing board, and he'll he'll be really focused on that. He's, he's setting up his mixing equipment. Okay. Yeah. Um. You you immediately see that there's like they've got some sound a sound system. Uh, like there's some some speakers that are wired up. There's act there's actually like a a, a fairly decent uh, um, console uh, that can actually pipe sound through the building. Um, uh. <laughs> like yeah, th because like I said, this was an old dance hall, um, and they cool. seem um, they seem to have co-opted that that technology. Well, what what Alex is going to do is uh, he's going to put on one of his mixes. Not terribly loud, not loud enough to drown them out, and not loud enough to create noise complaints or anything like that, but mm -hmm. loud enough that if anybody is standing outside the building trying to listen in with heightened senses, they're mostly going to hear trance music instead. I dig it. So yeah, mm -hmm. like I said, there's a, there's an area that has like a, kind of a circle of chairs uh, where obviously like you know that they had they had a conversation circle. Uh, where you guys can congregate and uh, and ha talk business with this with this sweet ass trance music as a backdrop. Uh, well, Willow Willow eventually does sit on one of the beanbag chairs. It's the better she, choice. She can't help it. Uh, but. Like, this place, oh, she already feels a little bit uncomfortable with it. She's still really uncomfortable with the ATM loiterer. And uh, she'll probably bring that up. And just uh... So so what are the chances that that is one of Mr. Tran's men that are there to keep eyes on us? Who are we talking about? The, the guy on the front. Outside. Oh. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's a very good chance. I took a glance at what he was saying and uh, texting back and forth to somebody. All I could catch was him saying he would check it out. I don't see why Tran would have anybody checking it out uh, mm -hmm. if we're at a place that he assigned to us that he obviously knows we're going to be at 
Edison Do tree. Do you have any sort of uh, way to get a read on what kind of uh, being he is? Uh, maybe. So, um, player question. Mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, level animalism power since the beast lets you tell if someone is a uh, vampire or werewolf or others not. Mm -hmm. not <laughs> a, a, a not normal human folk. Um, would I be able to use that with uh, the with the distance between uh, the person and where we are at if I'm looking at them? Uh, according to the sheet that you gave me, you don't have animalism. I'm pretty. Hold on. Am I... No, I'm looking yeah. at the I'm looking at the wrong sheet. <laughs> I was I'm like, sorry. I just opened my sheet that I sent you because I had the wrong one saved on my computer. I'm I very... know I have it. I'm very sorry. I was looking at the wrong <laughs> sheet. Let me just double check that power to see if there's any roll necessary. Um, and, and while you're doing that, I'm actually gonna bop over to my bookshelf and sure. grab my book. Good plan. Yeah, Madison is just gonna kind of think out loud while she's sort of staring out across the window uh, at this guy and just say, you know, if we can't puzzle it out, there's four of us and one of him. We can just have a conversation. I like the way you think. Just, just saying. This is our territory, so if he's an Anarch, we're completely within our rights, and if he's not an Anarch, well, we're completely within a completely different set of rights. <laughs> I mean, certainly if you have the combat capability, but I don't. I'm not saying we kill the guy. Just scare him a little. Well, I'm, I, yeah, but I think you're saying that we, uh, you know, engage in some manner of fisticuffs, and that's right. not really my so, not uh, necessarily. Cadence, that is a resolve plus animalism roll. Okay. And please roll your hunger dice as well. Yep. What is my resolve? Garbage is what that is. Ugh. Uh, that's two. Two successes? Okay. Yes, none um, of them ten. That's fine. Um, all right, yeah, so you kind of, you, you peek out a little. Uh, you, you actually have to take a gander, uh, at this guy. Mm -hmm. Um, like, you have to, to give him a good long look, which means pulling the curtain aside for a bit. Um, and when you do that, you actually lock eyes with him for a moment. Um, oh, that and... You, know, you 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 know he sees he you see him seeing you, but you don't detect any kind of beast or supernatural predatory nature to him. Okay. Uh, good news. Uh huh. Uh, he ain't one of us. Bad news. Okay. He knows I'm in here. Well, he already probably knew that you were in here. Um, he's a. Uh... He could be a ghoul, or he could be something else entirely. Do we actually know what killed the former tenants of this building? The information we were given is that it, they they uh, irritated a group of Sabat until the Sabat grew more than irritated. And engaged in some manner of fisticuffs. Uh, when well, you take... needless to say, I'm quite worried. When you take another look, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to try to go find him? I feel like that's a good idea. So if me and you, let's go find him, Cadence. And when we do, uh, let's let's rule out whether or not it's just local gangs looking to sell drugs out of an empty building. Let's try to buy drugs from him. And if he does, then it's probably mortal gangs looking for a place to set up. If, if I may offer just a... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but if I may oh. offer a single counterpoint, probably that gentleman is, in fact, what you have said, just some mortal who's looking to sell drugs out of an abandoned building. However, if that is, in fact, the herald of an incoming attack, I feel like perhaps having the one really combat capable person not in this building with me is is not conducive to my continued health. Oh. Oh. Do you want to come then? Well, I suppose I feel like he had a cell phone, so trying to hunt him down to stop him from delivering a message is useless. We're not going to no. come back. 
If he's I going just... to come back, he's going to come back. I don't feel like really hunting him down is going to make any difference. Uh, Cadence looks extremely disappointed, and she stares at the door with this pout on her face. It's like, but... But I, I feel really like if he's wanna. going to... I know, I know, my dear, but if he's going to attack, he'll be... He'll come here to attack us, and uh, you'll get to kill him then. I don't want to kill him, I just want to kick his teeth in. Right, well, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, I suppose. I'm just going to check out the back door, just to make sure that's not where he is <laughs> right now. So, I, like, get up, out, I, like, struggle to get up out of the bean bag. I'm just like, oh, got you know, it, wait, this is why you need sits in these. You're a creature. You help. You are a creature of supernatural grace, but it's still so. Oh man, it's I'm just really so voluminous. Yeah. That's a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. Cadence offers you a hand. Like, thanks, uh, thanks. Uh, plus, Cadence, think of it this way: if they do come here and attack, we'll have a lovely soundtrack to kick their teeth into. That gets a laugh out of me as I'm on my way to the back door. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Let's, yeah, let's so, with that. so you go to the back door, take a peek out. Um, you don't see anybody, mm-hmm. um, and you know you 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 are able to resecure the lock uh, fairly easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kind of have to give the lock a little English because it looks like it it got it got mistreated a little bit. But eventually, you're able to resecure it. I'm gonna put that on the list of things that I want to put upgrades on for this <laughs> place. While well, I'm up and about, that probably is something that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing an assessment of the haven. Okay. For any sort of points of entry. Sure. Um, and whatnot. While people are talking or. All right, I will let you give. I will let you take. Uh, so you're probably like listening with one ear to the conversation. Uh, I'm gonna have you give me an intelligence plus larceny. Um, go ahead and add your specialty because you're you're sort of reverse engineering break in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and do your hunger dice. Ooh, and you said um. It's six and above, yeah? Six and above, yeah. All right. I have uh, three successes, one ten. Okay. So tens only count when... don't oh, Tens only count extra when there's another ten on the roll. So, yeah, you 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 take... You're, you're going to... I'll get back to you on what you uh, yeah. what you see, but we'll let, let the other three continue their chat. So yeah, peeping Tom aside, we need to figure out what we're going to do in the short term to cement our hold over this territory. I don't give a damn about the Sabbat right now. That's something we can worry about in the long term, but we need to make it clear. First of all, we need to figure out who's operating in this area, who considers it part of their territory, whether mortal or non-mortal. And we need to make it very clear that we are not a group of people to be fucked with. And the sooner we establish that, the sooner we will proceed to not be fucked with. Then we can focus on things that actually fucking matter. Opinions? Um, I'm, I mean, I absolutely agree. Uh, it's going to be difficult if there are, are nearby mortal gangs, because I'm certain that there are going to be quite a lot more of them than there will be of us. Yeah, yeah but we just have to convince them it's not worth their time. Alex will look around the room and look around sort of just at the rundown aspects of this little area and he'll say, I, I, I just don't see why it would be worth anyone's time. I'm kind of with you on that. The, this, you know, bring up a question, which is presumably the previous proprietors of this lovely establishment were... um not the only ones worshipping the good word. I suspect that their herds and their regular feeding targets were probably part of some sort of congregation, which means that congregation, unless they 
set up a really impressive dead man switch for a killing they didn't think they were going to undergo uh, is probably going to show up on Wednesday night or Sunday morning looking to talk about Jesus, and I'm really not interested. How long has that group been... You know, the, the previous folks here have been gone anyway. I don't know if they made it clear. I assumed it was recent, but... Within the last few weeks. Yeah. Mm. So they may have already showed up once or twice and just... I don't know. I'm just saying there are people who knew there were there was a group operating here. Mm -hmm. That group has disappeared for no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. and I'm not pretending to be a priest. I'm not doing it. So we're going to have to figure out something else. Well, I mean, the easiest thing to do is to put a um, notice on the door saying that the building's either been condemned or, uh, or it's repurposed in some way. Yeah, we don't want to say it's condemned because we're not going to condemn it. <laughs> At least, I mean, I guess we could. Put up sort of, hear... some sort of zoning sign. Yeah, you hear a shout from down the hall as I'm looking through stuff. You can say it's asbestos. <laughs> and I just keep going through with the laser pointer, like looking. It's an old enough building. She's absolutely right. We mm -hmm. could just say asbestos it needs yeah. to be cleared out, however. So and then uh, I mean, there just might could, be asbestos here. <laughs> if we could actually it's... somehow convert any herd or what, what have you, that would be lovely. So that was my, where I was going with this is this place used to be club of some sort, if I'm not mistaken. Turn it back. Just turn it back. Um, it's going to be one of the most believable repurposing from a mortal perspective. Oh, the building that used to be a dance club got bought by some hippies. The hippies left and somebody turned it back into a dance club. Wow, no I'm way. Not, I've, got, so, uh, I've got a possible idea. Um, I could just buy it and turn yeah. it into my club. Now, if I were to do that, my, my primary concern is that it would begin a process of gentrification in this neighborhood. Yeah, we don't want to do that in either respect. We certainly don't want your name on it in any way. So we should probably not use your cash for that. So Willow, yeah. uh, you've cased the joint pretty well. Um, and mm -hmm. to your... Uh, surprise, perhaps. This is a very secure building. Um, you know, that, that door is... Nice. That door, those locks are solid on the back door. Um, it, it's, you know, it would take some doing to get through it. Uh, like, you were, like, looking at it from the outside, and, you know, it was kind of giving you a head-scratcher before she mm -hmm. was able to open it. Um, you know, the only other entrance is the front with the windows. That's definitely a vulnerability. Um, but that's really the main point of egress. Um, you do notice, um, there is a hatch, uh, opening on the, on, in one of the office rooms, mm -hmm. um, that is similarly well secured. Um, but, um, you're kind of, you're, you're remembering the outside, um, and you, you remember there was kind of like a little hut uh, and, uh, uh up, up there that corresponds to there so you could get you out of the building yeah. um and not be in direct sunlight from from that exit mm, okay uh yeah i'd like to investigate that hatch okay. and everything yeah and it's yeah like, oh good three exits yeah it's uh it's okay. in um uh, yeah, it's in one of the one of the main office rooms. Uh, that seems to have, there's there's like six rooms that are that are sort of had been converted. So one of them, sort of centrally located, has a ladder that leads up to the hatch, and it's got a couple of locks on it um, that uh, that that you could probably undo with some time. Mm -hmm. Do I want to undo them? Well, I do want to see exactly what it looks like on the other side, just so I have a mental picture of that. So, yes, I'll take okay. the time to open it up. All right, so give me a dex larceny with your hunger. While she's doing that, do you guys continue your conversation? Yeah, so hey. here's my pitch. Or were you going to say something, Cadence? Oh, I was just going to say that Cadence is sitting quietly letting Alex and Madison hash this stuff out because that is their area of expertise and not hers. Do ones take away in this game? They Why do not. Why all these questions? Oh, that's okay. fine. That's fine. They do not. 
One's right, only so, matter uh, on one's only matter uh, if they are hunger ones, hunger. and if you fail the rest of the roll. All right, they are uh, two successes. Okay, it's t it takes you a little bit because there's, um, uh, you know, these are some more heavy duty locks, mm -hmm. uh, but you're you're working through it, so I'll, I'll let you know when you got it open. Anyway, so Madison, you were staying. Yeah, here's my pitch. We can kill two birds with one stone. We want to get our fingers on the pulse of the area, and we want to legitimize this place so that we can kind of hide in plain sight, which is, you know, the thing that we do as horrible blood-sucking parasites of the night. So we retrofit the place back into a club, and we put the word on the street that this is a place where you can come at certain hours to have certain dealings under the protection of the pr proprietor. We draw them to us. I, I like your proposal. Allow me to make one counter proposal. We do want to legitimize this place, and we want to make this a place that the neighborhood denizens are not afraid of. Very specifically, if we're going to sort of uh, claim this area, we want the mortals of this area to be willing to support us. Exactly. So here's, here's, my, uh, here's my thoughts. You and I both operate charities that don't have our names attached. We could buy this building as a co-venture between our charities Easy. and es establish it as a sort of youth club. We could genuinely, actually legitimize this building while using it for our purposes. And then when we are done here, it will actually be a place where the youth of this neighborhood can come uh, and find safety and education and camaraderie absent the violence of the region. Well, youth club by day, dance club by night, it's not the worst idea I've ever heard. I will definitively at some point give you the worst idea you've ever heard. Oh, I'm sure you will. Quite a good one. That's actually not a bad thought. Not that I would know a good thought, but I know that's definitely not a bad one. Hey, don't sell yourself short. It's much easier to tell bad ideas than it is to come up with good ones. Besides so, which, if you were the idea person, then uh, people like me wouldn't have any reason to exist. So I'm sure that your ideas are going to be quite lovely when people are swinging baseball bats at my head. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, they are. So Willow, you are able to pop that last lock uh, and open up the hatch. Um, mm -hmm. There is a... Uh, it's It opens up into like this like tin-roofed uh, sort of small structure... Uh, mm -hmm. that leads up to the edge of the building uh, where there's a ladder going down. Um, and just on a quick approximation of it, you can tell that you can get from the top of this building down into the shaded area of the alley fairly quickly. So this, this definitely seems like yeah. a bug out hatch. Yeah, no kidding. Uh... Um, and like you're looking around and like there's like there's like low key barbed wire around the the edges so it's difficult to get into mm -hmm. um but it's it's designed for a quick egress all right that's i uh, willow's unease about the building is put at rest yeah okay you know uh, after after seeing all this she's just like okay no these guys knew what they were doing. They probably weren't killed in their sleep, so I'll, I could rest easy with that. Okay, so, so you sh you shimmy down, resecure things, and sort of come back into the conversation. Uh, yeah, this place is watertight. Yeah. They have no. Shit. Three exits. Uh, they have a what appears to be an actual factual bug out hatch in the where is the third office. oh the hatch is the third one yeah no shit all right oh. it's it's pretty it's pretty secure uh Wizard. you guys figure out what you wanted to do are we hosting quinceaneras here what's happening you know you're not super far off <laughs> actually yeah oh. uh well one thing we're definitely doing is uh changing the bloody name Please. oh heck yeah i hate that sign Oh, the sign's fucking gone tonight. Oh, Are we all we on? The... We're all in agreement, right? That sign yeah, is no, fucked. The, the, 
the, the side and the posters and everything yeah. about everything. But we're keeping the bean bags. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right. Things yeah, are expensive. I suggest that we retain some of the religious iconography just because it will put the locals at ease. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I mean, if that's what they're into, I'm not one to judge. This is Georgia. <laughs> so, Madison, uh, you it's still the same scene, so you still have your heightened senses up. Um, I want you to give me a wits awareness and aspects roll. Oh, shit. Oh, I see shit's going down. Oh, shit. All right. Do, 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 do. Come, go the fuck. Please stop. Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, I got two successes. Okay. So it's a little difficult to hear over the, the over the music, but you, you hear at the edge of your perception, you hear a low rumble. Um, start to slowly approach like the sound of a heavy engine hey what the fuck is that he stands up anybody else hear that what the fuck is what and she's There's gonna a... actively try to hear whatever he's hearing whether or not she actually can because she's yeah. in that possible. that's a that's a wits awareness okay i'm gonna go to the window again because whatever people know we're here i don't give a fuck i don't uh, actually think i have heightened senses i have auspects um, you you have have yeah, right? no you don't you have a sen you have sense the unseen and premonition uh oh uh, okay cool that's two <laughs> two successes um yeah. it's you you think you might hear something but you it's hard to filter out of the uh, uh of the of the music hey, hey alex can, can you turn the tunes down just, just a little bit pull the blind and look um there's uh you see you don't see the source of the noise um but you do see uh, a collection of about five uh, people rounding the corner. Like coming around to our back entrance or coming no, to, towards to us? No, to the front entrance. Okay. So we, uh, we've got five people heading our way. Oh, I knew we should have chased that guy down. Can it, What's their body okay. language looking like? Yeah. Um... Are they like give, dooper, dooper, dooper. Or are they like die motherfucker you know like <laughs> give me a wits insight roll. Alrighty. I'm better at that. <laughs> Excuse oh. me. Alright. I'm better at it, but I failed. You failed. Did you did you hunger <laughs> fail? I All did right. not. Yeah, you can't get a read on them. There's there's too fucking dark outside. Yeah, it's too dark. Um they got some kind of energy to them, but you can't get a beat on it. Yeah, I can't really tell if they're here to throw down or like what the hell's going on. So but, uh, as you're, I'm gonna open the door and say hi. So at, so basically, as you're opening the door, uh, one of them come is in front of the door and like has his fist raised to knock, and he's just ah. I... How's it going? While while that is happening, Willa definitely is going to be back in a way okay like around a corner gotcha Same. so they if they come in they'll see however many people decided to stay there gotcha uh, okay that way so if i need to surprise somebody i can so uh this is a this is a young uh african-american gentleman probably in the area of his 20s uh on the low end of his 20s probably uh he says uh Hey man, are you guys holding communion tonight? Uh, we weren't planning on it, but I mean, is there something on your mind? He's like, oh, it's just you know, uh, you know, we haven't had communion in in, a, in about a week or so, man. Uh, and we noticed you guys were. Are you with uh, the the brothers and sisters? Mm, no, unfortunately, we're not. But oh, hey, why don't you come in and take a seat and. Tell like, me what what's on your mind. It's the least they can do, right? He's like, kind of gives you a side glance, and he kind of looks to his fellows, and they they're they're pretty wary, but uh, but they all seem to sort of silently agree that getting into the building is better than not getting into the building. Uh, so they kind of they start to file in. 
And these are these are all young people. Uh, there's two women and three men. Um, uh oh, a doggo approaches. Um, it's okay. Um, they have a dog. <laughs> um, uh, like the dog like moves in and like immediately goes to a corner. Uh, well, Cadence like... is here, so at least uh, one of us isn't totally repulsive. Yeah, but it just like <laughs> yeah, it it just like it goes to a corner that like immediately looks like it's his corner. Gotcha. <laughs> so, um, like it just it immediately like circles three times and sits. Um, but all these three young people, all these four five young people, uh, they're they're well dressed, they're groomed. Um, you know, they don't look like they don't look like thugs or ruffians. Um, mm-hmm. but they, they sort of come in and like sort of scope out the place and, and like, you know, some of them sort of like one of them goes over to like the coffee, pl- the coffee bar essentially, and like starts rummaging around and, and they just sort of, yeah, we, we did leave everything pretty much how it yeah, is. It's, it's pretty much exactly like, like they, they look Except like the bump and trance music. Indeed. Like <laughs> they're um... They're. They don't seem to be reacting like poorly to that. Like you think that may, like music is probably a thing that happens here. Maybe not this style of music, but it's not. Like I'm assuming it's not like Satan trance music, <laughs> Alex. No, just you no, know. No, like it's uh, actually. And when they come in, I will, I will dip it into something that is uh, more. It's still going to be EDM, but it's going to be more gentle. So there's no like big bass drops or anything like that. I dig kind it. Kind of ambient house, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they seem to put it. So they I all call and... this one. I call this one ambient house of the Lord. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Great so fun. yeah, um, they seem to be familiar with everything, um, and that one that one young man who you spoke to, uh, he seems to like sort of stay in the central area. Um, and he sort of looks around. Um, uh, so Cadence and Willow, did you guys like fully retreat or are you still in the main area? I, cause it's a big room and then the hallways leading up mm-hmm. to the bedrooms. Um, I'm probably like against one of the walls. And okay. so if they come to round the corner, they'll see me, but I'm just like, I'm still waiting. To yeah. See none of, you. none of them are heading to the back area. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted cadence to be far enough away that like they wouldn't feel uneasy around her because she knows that she makes mortals feel uneasy mm. and that is bad if there, madison is trying to get information yeah, there is Leave that the social characters there uh, i am gonna fire off a text uh to cadence and willow that basically says i'm pretty sure these guys weren't making the monster truck noise do you want us to Check out the monster truck noise. Thumbs she up texts emojis. back. Thumbs or, up. It, I, her phone probably doesn't isn't capable of emojis, so she probably just gets like a weird ASCII like, thing. <laughs> UT, UTC plus one one seven five. What the fuck is that mean? <laughs> I love it. I don't remember she, that she just is going to hey, assume Scott. it's an yeah? affirmative. Hold on, Alex. Yeah. Um. So. Because I don't have the sheet in front of me, and because I'm I'm still mm. a little a, a glancing on the system, am I able to use premonition on that noise to get a, a general idea of what's about to happen to us? Yeah, you absolutely can. Uh, you that will be a, a rouse check to use it uh, proactively. So I'll go ahead and do that for you, and you're able to keep the beast at bay. Uh, it doesn't uh, arouse it, but let me go ahead and just peruse the rules. So I believe yeah. you have to make a roll for that. Madison is just kind of like palling around with these guys. Like mm-hmm. basically, his tack is, you know, the 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 previous uh, previous occupants, you know, split for reasons unknown, but they put the property up for sale, and mm-hmm. I am an interested buyer, and it, it's actually kind of cool that some people who used to use the facility have come by because I'd like to hear about you know, what role it played in the community and like what your relationship with them was because, you know, just because I want to pick up the property doesn't mean I just want to flip it over and tell everybody to go fuck themselves. Right. And he's just basically trying to position himself that way. So yeah, you're, you're, you're you're carrying a lot of the weight of this conversation. Um, There's a lot of yeahs and uh uh-huhs and 
um, when he does respond to you, when you give him a moment, it's almost like he's responding to a different conversation. Uh, he's like, so do you know where those, the, where the previous guys went? Or, you know, so do you have their contact information? Um, like, the, he, he's, he seems to have kind of a, a one-track focus. Alex, uh, you, mm. you kind of lean back close your eyes let the let the ambient house of the lord uh get you into a groove and you see this place uh and you see it filled with people who are dancing and screaming and clawing at their bodies uh, in ecstasy. Um, and they flash between modern day and ancient Greek, um, tearing at, you know, drowning these, these casks of wine. Uh, and, uh, you just, you, you have this ancient remembrance of the Bacchanal. But anyway, yeah, she's like, so, so, yeah, man, do you, do you have their contact information or anything? Because, you know, they were a big part of this community and we've, uh, you know, they, they had a lot of, they, they had a lot of good things to, to say and, and we're, I'm going to really... text Madison. I know what this is. It's going to get bad in a minute. He just looks at the text, doesn't understand what it means and puts it back away because he doesn't have time to think about that in this conversation. <laughs> But he'll he's, he's register like, yeah, in his mind. We haven't we yeah, haven't he, we haven't had the Holy Communion in, in in a while, man, and and he's like They're just Scott. driving for that juice, mm -hmm. guys. <laughs> uh Scott, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over to, to where it's at and I'm gonna in his best American accent hmm. with all of his face covered up, hmm. um Alex is gonna say, Yeah, I think I know what holy communion you're looking for, man. Can you be a little bit more specific. What 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 flavor wafers do you need? Um, they uh, he looks to one of the other people, one of the girls, um, and like they they share a significant glance. Um. Uh. Hold on, let me. I need to look something up here real quick. Oh. They're all definitely ghouls. Yeah. Maybe. Definitely. Oh shit! I just found a typo. Um. <laughs> oh no! Wait, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Never mind. Not nice. Um. Somebody bleed into the orange cooler. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put in some tang. <laughs> the lowest quality of all flavored beverages. Yeah. In case you love tang, then it's fantastic. It's uh. So I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna need to roll something for you, Alex, real quick. Uh, give me but a moment to. Ominous. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be okay, guys. It's not like this is a World of Darkness game or anything. Yeah, you know, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Probably just rolling for what positive personality traits they have. Indeed, absolutely, <laughs> that's what it is. All right. Um, oh, I know exactly what it is. So, um, <laughs> Cadence, yes. you were you going out? Were you like slipping out the back to try and find the the the, the motor noise? Is that what you were doing? Yes. I okay. feel like that's a bad plan now, but Cadence wouldn't know it's a bad plan. As yeah, far as she concerned, uh, uh, she has permission to go investigate. Indeed so that's you what do. she's going to do with enthusiasm. So uh I watch you go to the back door like And she's gonna look at the she's gonna show Willow the text and I sent it to Willow too. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm thinking that like things have proceeded like the 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 warning bells didn't start going off until you were well on this action, um, mm. 
so yeah, so you're able to to get out the door. Um, uh, and are you how, how are you how are you prosecuting this action? Are you trying to be um, stealthy about it? Are you? She, could she get like I know she didn't hear a lot or she didn't hear it very well, but did she get like a direction from where that rumble was coming from? Once you get out the door. Uh, and and Alex turns down the music a little bit. You, you're able to hear it. You're able to hear sort of like the sound of an idling big motor. Okay, then she is going to go towards it. And yes, she is definitely doing that stealth thing. Okay, give me a dex stealth roll with okay. your hunger dice. Slinky. All sneaky like and quiet like. Hopefully, ah uh, one. Two, three, no relevant hunger die. Fantastic. So yeah, you're able to sneak through the alley uh, and uh, get around the corner uh, where you see um, this uh, short, like it's it's a it's a it's an old like short school bus that's mm-hmm. been painted midnight blue um, mm-hmm. and has like like it has the name you know Blessed Night Revival Hall on it um and there are probably about six people like in the truck in 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 the in the bus just sort of hanging out while the engine idles okay and if so i would like to use uh sense the beast again here to uh see if any of them are uh are vampires okay uh, go ahead and roll that. Uh, um, you sh- it is uh, resolve plus animalism, animalism plus composure. Oh no, sorry, no, oh. not plus composure. It was all plus yeah. animalism. Yeah, sorry. Mm, that's one. One. Yeah, mm-hmm. you don't you don't detect any beast any in, in the any of these people. Okay. All right. Uh, so she is not going to antagonize them. Uh, she is going to slink back into the house, um, and then she is going to, uh, send probably actually just I'm probably a text chain to everyone, <laughs> because yeah. that seems to okay. be the safest bet, right. just being, uh, like, bus full of Jesus freaks. All right, I'll, I'll let you know when that goes off. Uh, okay. so back in the, back in the hall, um, he gives a look to one of the girls um and she sort of she comes a couple steps up to you alex uh and gives you a hard look um and she's like i i sense the blessed presence in him brother they're i don't i don't know if they're one of the anointed ones but they're they have the holy communion i can feel it the Lord moves through me, sister. I think I know what you're looking for. They kind of... There's a mood to them. Like, like it's it's kind of relief. It's kind of anticipation. It's kind of, like... You, truly, you, you... You share their nature. You, you have the holy... The holy light. I share the holy light, but I share it in a different way. Brother and sister, I think that we can probably help you with what you need. But before that happens, I'm going to have to ask that you have a little faith in me. I need to speak to my brother here uh, about what it is specifically that you're looking for. Can I trust you to let us step aside for a moment and speak? They kind of say, yeah, yeah. He's like, call, call. He go. he, 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 um turns to another one and says, tell the others, tell the others. And it's at that time that, uh, Cadence, <laughs> you come through the back and you see Willow there waiting for you. What's up there? And what did you she, see? Uh, just, she sends a group text, holds up her phone so Willow can see bus full of Jesus freaks. How many? Six. Text it in. It says send, so the others have it. So yeah, so you so, guys, so they they sort of they're they're waiting, like they're giving you some time, but they're they're obviously just like they've got there's a big mood of nervous anticipation here. They need their fix. They're thirsty. 
Okay, so I'm going to take uh, Madison back to where Willow and yeah. Cadence are waiting, and I'm going to say, we all know what they're looking for, and I have to tell you, if we don't give it to them, we're, we're going to be involved in a fight, but I don't feel comfortable chaining them beneath the weight of my blood. Yeah, well, we don't know anything about these guys. I mean, one drink isn't a chain. But it won't be one drink. It will be reinforcing what is clearly an addiction that's been going on for some time. And frankly, I'm somewhat frustrated that the supposed Anarchs who held this building before were keeping blood slaves. Yeah, that's mad skeevy. You know, it's not totally clear whether they're looking to give or take. Madison, you hear uh, you hear the the sound of that engine stop. Oh, bus full of Jesus freaks. Wait, more of them? Six. She <laughs> did you not get my text? Uh, you know, I was kind of focused. So there's eleven of them. Yeah, we don't. I mean, even if we did, you know give them a drink there ain't enough between us for like 11 they're probably diluting it in the the jug the oh, big cooler yeah. they probably were diluting it yeah there's no Thoughts chance are... that these individuals know exactly what's being done to them but no. what i do know is that if we don't do it it's going to get painful so i'm at a loss here madison you're the idea man what do we do no, we definitely need to do something. It's an asset that already exists. Even if it's one that I'm not totally comfortable with in the short term, we can't really pass up that sort of influence and connection. And those people are going to be fucking miserable. And, it's going to be a terrible... And if look. they know that we got what they want, then they're not going to shut up about it. Correct. It's also a problem. I mean, there's a certain, there's a certain amount to be said for breaking the addiction slowly. We yeah, can exactly. offer them... A treatment, as it were, and, and slowly wean them off of it. But I, for 11 people. I register my discomfort with it. Unmanageable for 11 people. Weaning off ghouls is a frustrating process. For Not one. easy. For 11, if they get desperate enough, well, they'll come back here and find us and take what they want. Yeah. The way I see it is that we're pretty much in that situation already because those people haven't had a drink for almost a month now. Yeah. I am definitely not going to advocate for Cadence kicking the shit out of 11 innocent people. I'm not advocating for me kicking the right. shit out of 11 people. One, maybe. Two, maybe. 11? Hell no. Well, I mean, you can handle this. Mm. Well, then I think our path is clear, unfortunately. Yeah. So we just need to figure out how to, uh, you know, stretch the old rations. Well, I would say four separate decanters. We each contribute. Um, fuck, I hate this. Well, if this is the shittiest thing we have to do once we've moved in here, I think we're actually pretty lucky. <laughs> yeah. I. So Alex will go to... Try to find like a supply room and see if he can find uh, communion supply. Um, you don't find like there's that kitchen area which seems to be like the 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 closest thing. You you find a lot of uh like you find a prodigious amount of like small paper cups, um, uh, and uh and uh, cherry Kool Aid. Yep. I'm I'm gonna start getting the, well, the the cooler at this point. Uh, it's a sad thing to say, but in in LA, kind of stuff is not uncommon. The creatures of the night want to rally against the man. Sometimes they still participate in uh, so holding others to bonds. So when you head well, out, I have a question. Hmm? I'm sorry. Well, uh, look, I have a question. I've never done this before. Uh, is it possible, since we're really going to have to do this out of a single uh, decanter, is it possible that we mix it up in there and, and, and we don't actually know who's done it, I guess? Like, if we mix our blood, will it still work? Yes. Yes. It yeah, it's going to make it worse, actually. So, let's oh, mix it in, well, shit. dilute it, 
What do they have to mix it with? I say it as I like start to open the cooler and I look at the cherry residue in it and I'm just oh. So Scott. Yeah. Could I make some sort of role to try to piece together the exact methodology that was being implemented by our predecessors? Um sure, let me take a look. I got a bunch of academics. You do in fact have a bunch of academics. And I'm real of... smart. Give me Hold on. Because at this point yeah. we've got Give me the an tools, in... the area, the people. Uh so yeah, I'm I'm gonna say that to get a full picture of this, you're gonna need an intelligence academics role and an intelligence occult role. Uh, but okay. that that could be done by someone else, uh, and you guys. Can... I'll do the academics part because I have no occult. Um, yeah. Does my history specialty help me in any, any way here? No, you don't think uh, that it would. I have a single dot of occult. There you go. Right, I've got three successes. Okay. Oh God! Remember... It rolled under the desk. And, uh, All right, let's 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 do another one. Remember that two hunger. Uh, yeah. that's one. Okay. It's automated, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, well, I was saying that for cadences. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so the two of you kind of like like you're in the, the you're all, you're in the kitchen area. Willow goes out and gets the cooler, and there are eleven people in this room now. Um. Uh. And you. Uh. You sort of yeah. You're able to look around. You look at their materials. You look at what they have. Uh. You find like an old notebook that has like like kind of like a a script uh like a very hastily like r- r- script to it i'm going to toss that at uh alex <laughs> gonna... well well you, you yeah, actually I'll immediately need... start pouring through it yeah so you're able to piece together it's not good luck father <laughs> it's not exactly as bad as you think um because from from reading this, you sort of get like you guys have sort of two ideas of what this is. Uh, you know, it's give or take, uh, and you think it's more of a mix. You think that there are um, there are at most four ghouls here uh, because they talk about like the mother, the, the 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 child of the of the east wind the child of the north wind the child of the west wind the child of the south wind that received the true communion um and uh, Scott, one of the things that's going to be very very important for me mm-hmm. uh, is do i see any sabbat rhetoric in this script no you don't see anything although I will Excellent. say you're you're talking about like mixing your blood in a common vessel. You, you are <laughs> you're you're getting. Oh no, that is precisely why I did that. Yeah, no, you're you're getting some PTSD flashbacks, basically. <laughs> uh, of of uh, well, is it PTSD if it's a really good memory? Um, yes. But like you know, it's a really bad thing, but it's still a really good memory. Um, okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah. we feed the mixed blood to them, we can feed it to each other. Ah, well, you don't have the blessed cup and, and you know, the holy <laughs> holy rite of Cain. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, like, you think that there are, like, four actual ghouls here, and the rest of these people are jonesing for the kiss. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Madison, like, like, looks at Cadence and just goes, that is so fucking good. All right, so okay. That is so good. Not. Uh, uh, That's that is seven I, shitty slavery thing points less bad than I thought it I, was, I, and seven herd points better than I thought it was. I, That's at least forty nine points. Out of character, um, Cadence does have the obvious predator flaw, so she can't actually keep a herd. For you, that's, that's true. great. For Just her. wait till one of them is uh, sleeping. But this is pretty fantastic because it means Cadence doesn't have to keep a herd. You can use the haven. That you can use the haven because they'll keep coming back. Mm-hmm. Fair. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so you guys are able to sort of piece together 
uh, like, you know, oh, we we just we don't need to know who the ghouls are. We just call them by these ritual names and mm -hmm. they'll just they'll come forward. Yeah, um, we should each take but one there, of them. And that's the most fair way to distribute that. But there is but it, there is a there is a mingle like they do mention like the holy like the holy vessel and the commingling of the divine essence. Um, <laughs> Willow says under her breath, oh, my God, it's just an orgy house. Just so like you, you get you the just idea. Get when she says that They're I literally laugh. Mm -hmm. I thought it oh. Dude, you <laughs> should have seen you should have seen the bed that, that this one chick had. It was definitely definitely exactly what you're thinking. The bit Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, no. The <laughs> They, they they was some nasty motherfuckers. Yeah. But yeah, it does it does mention you know the the that you know you like pour the pouring of of, of of holy essence commingling in the in the vessel. Uh, so it does there is an element of putting multiple blood in 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 a single carrier that's then distributed out. At least that's the mm -hmm. proper ritual. Well, Whenever. you actually you actually you actually don't see any mention of them seeing what goes into the into the jug. Let's hey guys. take it to another room to prepare the elixir. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna it's eight twenty seven. I'm mm -hmm. gonna ask that we go ahead and break because if I don't pee right now, I will right. actually die. Fair enough. We were we were about to do a break. That's fine. Uh, so all think about how we want to enslave these people. Do, 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 uh, do, 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 do. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. We'll be right back. Uh, how long with... is the break? Uh, uh, as long as it takes for us to take care of our business. Okay, I'll be back. Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, everybody out in the chat. We'll be back soon. And we're back. Thank you, everybody, for uh, indulging our, our terrible <laughs> biological needs. Um, but anyway, so when we last left the Coterie, they Weird. were uh, they were surrounded by mortals who were all jonesing for their various fixes of, of one sort or the other. Uh, and they, had, they were trying to decide just how they were going to manage the... Uh, the distribution of blood. Uh, so let's let's join them back at that discussion. Have we, uh, the four of us, like moved to the office? Because yeah, you've like you've you're you're, you're you've moved back into one We're of the pondering in the office. You ba like you you guys are actually in the kitchen area, um, where like you know the sink is and the Kool Aid and the cups are. You you've closed the door basically so that you you uh, won't be heard. I, I turn on the sink so the hot water starts running. So I'm getting the feeling that we are going to be preparing Kool-Aid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're we're totally they're preparing Kool-Aid. I mean, for, like, the normal people. I mean, that's how communion... Um, I mean, it really depends on the ritual. Like, does everyone get, like, a normal sip of something and then only the... Or... It sounds... It sounds like um, uh, that it sounds like the 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 essence is diluted and mingled in the vessel. So that sort of sounds like they put their blood in the Kool Aid. And only the four people get the Kool Aid, or does everyone? Get and the only the four people get the Kool Aid. Uh, right, but let's make the Kool Aid. Uh... <laughs> Uh, and then there's sort of vague references to uh, the 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 uh, the the, com the the greater communion, which you're pretty sure involves fangs and the removal of clothing and 
people brought back for orgies into the rooms. Yeah, it's probably one of those kind of Jesus cults. Yeah, so I have the hot water on. I'm, like, looking at it, and I'm, like, zoning just, like... Just the realization that this is indeed an orgy thing, and that this is indeed an orgy cult thing, and I'm like, man, I've been, I've only been in Georgia, forty eight hours, <laughs> and now you've inherited a Christian sex cult. Uh, this isn't what I. That's thought, just the kind right? of thing that happens here in Atlanta. Well, it's like <laughs> it's like the it's like the lyrics say, "Welcome to Atlanta, where the players play." And <laughs> where are the players can confirm all right so how uh, who, whose blood is going into this kool-aid that's what i need to i'll know. do it okay i need a rouse check uh, might as well i mean if we're all in this together we are going to all be in this together yeah i passed okay <laughs> You you're able to give of give of your blood without uh, slipping the the new leash of the beast. That is a pass on my end as well. Okay, you too. You you give of yourself. One for me as well. Okay, Dang, I'm on a roll. Uh, today. Oh, and I will roll for Alex. I'm on a roll today. Hmm. Uh, actually, before I put my blood in this, I'm I'm gonna sort of look to uh, Madison for guidance. Like, you know, do do I need to do this? Do you want me to do this? I think we should all do it because that's the way to ensure that everybody has an equal investment and then there's no later accusation, resentment, or misunderstanding of the issue. All right. Well, you're sort of the leader, I guess. So here goes. Yeah, agreed. So I, I'll use a lore sheet to invoke some specific anarch ruling in the past that <laughs> underlines why that's a good idea. <laughs> rubber rubber sense. stamp Everyone and put go. Your hand in. So, yeah. uh, Alex, you. you cut your palm and and bleed into it and as you do uh you feel the beast inside of you rear up and, and just don't give that away you fucker don't give that away and you it your hunger rises oh god good thing so we're yeah. about to you know feed on people indeed yeah like like now now there is this little voice in the back and like just go get one of them just go get one of them just go get one of them. They're 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 giving it to you. They're giving it away. Just go. Just go. Just go. Cool. I'm gonna put my headphones in and uh, play uh, something uh, that will calm me as much as possible. Cause cause I know it's coming. I just gotta wait. Okay. I I that... pour in three fourths cup of hot water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That that uh that dilutes it out. Uh, put Terrible the Kool Aid in. The in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um. As far as the feeding part of this whole thing, mm-hmm. uh, is anyone going to be terribly opposed if I call first choice? Uh, of the 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 orgy group out there? No, go ahead. Yeah, I no. just need to make sure that they're fine. palatable. Uh, it doesn't matter to me at all. All right, cool. All right, Have a so spoon. <laughs> yeah, stir it up. You you get it. It's. It is what it is. It is a. It is. It is some blood laced Kool Aid. Do uh, we have uh, cups or? Yeah. Oh, there's, there's like fifty, literally yeah, like an industrial cups. triple Costco pack of them in this cabinet. Cadence will just bring over like an armful and drop them unceremoniously onto the counter. You want cups? We got cups. Uh, we just need four, I guess. Man, I. Mm. And I like start distributing it. Like you see, like the 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 baker jug in in the in the kitchen area uh, that probably doesn't have the big com- the, the special communion in it. Um, but you know, who knows when they drink that Kool Aid? Um, probably, you know, that's the one they probably lace with LSD. Um, they only do it once. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, anyway, hey, so you guys. Hey, Scott. Mm-hmm. In that second uh, jug of Kool Aid, we're gonna mm. go ahead and mix it up. Okay. And, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a couple of tabs of 2CB. In. <sighs> oh, Boris. Anyway, fantastic. I love it. So, um, <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, you bring out the jug, uh, and you know you you have this little script that you're able to follow. Uh, Alex, are you the one doing this? Yeah, I would assume so. Uh, okay. And while I'm doing it, note that I'm only dropping like maybe three tabs of 2CB and d- diluted that much. It's not going to cause like 
it's not a heroic, it's a very minor dose, but it's enough to kind of get people in an altered mind state. Um, primarily because I don't necessarily want them to remember that we're about to feed off of them. That's true. Um, James, don't and, tell me my business. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I was just uh, thinking that. My, my, my bad. Uh, <laughs> and I'm uh, <laughs> but let, me, let, let me phrase, that is my intention. My intention is that it is diluted enough just to kind of get people buzzy. Fair um, enough. And I also want uh, to be playing one of the songs that I've had a religious revelation to in the past, because okay. I know that if, if it's caused me to have a revelation, it will certainly cause them to. It's quiet over the house speakers, and I will do the script. Uh, and I do have performance on my sheet. All right. Let's, uh... And I'll sing it, because I have performance singing. Aww. All nice. right. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, man, you do, don't you? All right, so that's going to be a charisma and performance. So, and you are at three hunger. So Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to give that a roll, and I'm going to make an executive decision and say that the song that you're playing is "God Is a DJ" by Faithless. So just listen to that if you have time, audience and players. Okay. So. I desperately don't like the way you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to spend a willpower roll to re-roll three dice and uh, perhaps avoid getting this messy critical? I would indeed like to spend a willpower to re-roll three dice and avoid uh, eating everybody in this establishment. Okay. So I will tell you, of your four normal dice, uh, you have two regular successes and uh, one ten. Uh, so the question is, you're definitely re-rolling the ten. Uh, which of, do, do you wish to re-roll your two successes or one success and a non-success? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We lost him. We lost him. <laughs> ruh -roh. Boo, and that messes up everything. Uh, hopefully he'll be back shortly. So do we all, like, walk out there with, like, one oh, yeah. cup each in our hands? Just like, oh. I'm going to go ahead and, and do this reroll. I apologize for the, uh, for the weird uh, effect this has had on the overlay, uh, everyone. Okay. Um, hopefully he'll be back soon. Oh, Madison, did you put the, uh, uh, did you put the, uh, uh, song in the chat? Yeah! Excuse me. Yeah! Ooh. And again. I, I did do that, yeah. Okay, thank you. I appreciate yep. that. I think, uh, James... He's bleed over here so everybody can see me. Let me... Oh, has it pushed everyone? Yeah, off it's it's pushed everyone it? off to the side, unfortunately. Uh, give me. I'm, one... I'm good. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it, it's a, it's something with the overlay that's that's done. So let me. No, I know. I'm, I'm watching the stream on my. Uh, I'm gonna re ring him. <laughs> All right, that fixes it. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, totally hit the wrong button. Um, so. So I would I, I would like to succeed the roll. I just do not want it to be okay. a, a messy. Success. Okay. I've re-rolled it for you, and thankfully, you have avoided that. If you want to turn your camera off, James, I know people can't see it, but you're, we can see your camera. Uh, all right, there you go. Cool. All right, yes, so you feel, as you're singing and mixing and, and going through the motions, you feel the mania start to rise in you. Um, and you know that if you don't clamp down on it, it's going to get real bad real quick. So with an effort of will, you rein yourself in, and he gives, uh, you know, a truly inspiring and enthralling performance. Um, so much so that any inconsistencies with, like, their old ritual just get absolutely ignored. Um, and, you know, you, they call these four individuals, uh, which, you know, the, it was the, the, the young African-American man, the young woman who was able to sense you, uh, and two others, they come and call and take of the communion, and, and they just sort of, 
they are enthralled by the power of the Vitae. Uh, and all of you see this sort of this yeah. wash over them and you see you see their hunger and their addiction sated for the time being by your own blood. Um oh and he's gone again. Hold on guys. I'm gonna have to smack I'm him. I'd say I should definitely be taking some stains from this. Um let me yeah, if you feel like you take a stain, you take a stain. Uh, but it does. It's it is the, the the standard thing is blood bonding. A a mortal gives you a stain, and you not you have not fully blood bonded these people. But if you feel like with your tenants, uh, if your tenants clash with this, then you would take a stain. Uh, actually, I don't think they do now that I've reviewed them. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is definitely uncomfortable, but not soul existential crisising yeah uncomfortable yeah. we don't really have a choice honestly yeah i mean you know you could wipe their memories or you know anyway so yeah so these four individuals take of the blood uh, although they don't know that's what they're doing uh and then uh you know alex you you crank the volume on the the music and and the the holy holy revel starts uh you know the 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 glossinalia picks up here and there the you know the the dancing the 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 the, the mutual embracing uh maybe someone's jacket comes off and uh <laughs> and you you get the sense that the rest of these people are, are ready for their turn so madison i i believe you said you wanted first pick Yep, I'm going to try and scope them out, look for people who have any obvious signals that they might meet my criteria, like a class ring or okay. something. Uh, that's going to be a wit's insight roll to, uh, to to scope that out. Oh, boy. Fail my man. <laughs> two successes all right yeah so you there's you you're able to see the signs like you see a you see a um uh you know one of them has a has a hat uh that's from uh, georgia state uh and the other and there's 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 a couple of signs you think two. you you can't say for certain whether or not like all any of them are but you're certain that two of them at the least you can identify Commit them to memory and pick one to be my meal. Okay, it's not hard. I'm not making you guys roll any, uh, make any hunting rolls regarding yeah. this. Um, but yeah, that a very, very chill, but there's a there's a low key intensity to this kind of thing. It's not like a it's not like a full on rave. Uh, you know, everybody's listening to like chill trance music and uh, you know that. This, this is a thing that they're used to. Um, mm -hmm. But what I need to know from everyone is, does anyone take their hunger down to zero? No. No. Now, Alex, you're a bit hungrier than the rest of them, so that probably mm -hmm. means that you want to be a bit more um, indulgent. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, what Alex does is he tries to engage people in conversation because he wants to see their colors uh-huh um, and if he if he identifies a color that he likes um, he'll feed now he will try not to do that mm -hmm. um, but I uh, he is hungry so okay I would suspect that would be some sort of a role um, not at this point um, that yeah, you're not in, five. yeah, you're not in danger of frenzying right now. So unless you unless you consciously choose to kill someone by feeding on them at this point, uh, you wouldn't. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you're able to find a couple people whose colors are great. Uh, so do you do you do it one at a time or do you take two back to the uh, to the love pad? The many love pads. I'm gonna take two and I'm gonna. Um probably offer them ecstasy uh and 
uh, and where you, I'm, I'm going to go through all the correct motions the way that it would have been done uh, by the previous tenants. Um, and if that involves, you know, any exchanges of fluids, then that's just what's got to happen. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there is certainly some expectations that you pack up on, and all of you pick up on these expectations. I'm just um, going to say that Cadence is very uncomfortable with those <laughs> expectations. She's uncomfortable with this entire situation. One, because it is social hunting, which she is she is a mug someone in the back alley and, you know, so actually, take their wallet type of person. So. so, Cadence, I will say that, like, nobody approaches you. Like, you're not then, but eventually... Unless you like go for one, eventually like there's you see like there's a nod of conversation and someone is like like you you think you see some rock paper scissors going on, uh, oh. but eventually someone is yeah. basically pushed towards you. She would actually probably just see the rock paper scissors and shrug and like crack her knuckles and just go grab one of them by the shirt collar and be like, come on. Drag them to a back room. Yeah. Just just to like a corner somewhere. She's not going to attempt to be any sort of like gentle or sensual. Like this is a meal and whatever. Like this this isn't her scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Alex's predator type is Osiris. So this is exactly what he's used to. Indeed it is. Oh, I bet. Um, yeah, and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, getting, and getting consent isn't a problem here, uh, Madison. Um, yeah. w- does Willow have any, any particular, uh, slant uh, on this? Willow probably is going to go hang out in that back room and just sort of vet people. Okay. Uh, she doesn't want to, like, get naked here. Mm-hmm. She's still like, I do kind of like the vibe. Mm-hmm like the togetherness here but super not comfortable taking off my pants fair enough there, there's like a hard no let's keep the lights dim and okay <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it yeah i mean uh like and i will say uh for all of you except maybe for cadence uh at some point the the, the jesus talk does start um, like they, they, they're like, they're asking for advice and, you know, they're asking about like scripture reading, like as they're taking off their bra, um, like, yeah, I read that passage that sister, uh, that sister Lynn told me about and uh-huh. it really uh-huh. helped me uh, can like, what should I read next? Like bearing the neck. <laughs> I will just literally be like, oh, just practice positive self affirmations. That's what I do in the mirror every before I go out. So yeah, do that. I love it. I love it. Well for me. So yeah. So after everyone's fed, and we're gonna we're gonna close off the scene before we get uh, any super graphic. Uh, After everyone's fed, uh, all of you, uh, all of you do feel a little off. Uh, afterwards, uh, like there was something in these people's blood, uh, and like you all, uh, those of you who don't have Auspex, uh, for the rest of the night have a dot of Auspex. Those of you who do have Auspex have an additional die to your Auspex rolls. Not that we're going to make any of them, uh, yeah. but you're all just sort of more in tune with the world <clears throat> and whatnot. And, Maybe that's up to you whether you guys have fed on drugged individuals or not. Alex certainly knows what's up with this. So yeah, the rest of the night is kind of lost. Uh, any any planning or uh, or or um, agenda that you might have had kind of gets lost in this low key Christ orgy, which you know, the level of orgy is up to you. Man, George has been great so far. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that mother-father thing that happened less than 48 hours ago, this George is working out great. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the night passes. Uh, the people, uh, the people, some people stay, uh, uh, some people are there uh, when you guys wake up in the, in the evening. Uh, but most of them are on their way. And those that are there, uh, you know, like they ask when the next communion is. 
I'm, I'm going to get some contact info and let them know that <laughs> yeah. we're going to be uh, we're gonna be revising the schedule, but I'll let them know what's up. Okay, noted. So at this point, uh, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to we're going to zoom out a little bit, uh, and we're going to talk. You guys have basically about a week where nothing really eventful uh, interferes with you. So we're going to talk about how you guys get your roots planted. Uh, we're going to talk about how, you know, you, you all of you have people or connections that were transferred in from other places, except for Alex, of course, uh, who's already a, a homeboy. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, does anyone want to start? Um, I'll go, okay, I guess. Cool. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so you've been in contact with, with Benji, uh, mm -hmm. which I believe is like you're the one person that, that you are in actual contact with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's, he's found a place, um, nearby. Uh, I, I don't imagine you want him staying at the, at the Jesus Hall. Oh, oh, heck no. no. No, she's, she, she wants to keep her baby brother kind of separate from all the bullshit. Just, just enough to be comfortable, but, you know, close enough that she can still keep an eye sure. on him. Yeah, he, he's able to get, like, a one bedroom, uh, in Cabbage Town. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, what, uh, so yeah, you're able to settle him in pretty well. I mean, he can take care of himself. Uh, mm -hmm. but you know, big sis is always watching. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, what other, what other routes do you try and set down? What are, what are your plans? Okay. So, um, the, so, she, uh, she does have, uh, three dots of criminal contacts. Mm -hmm. So, um, how I imagine that this worked when she was back in Boston um, was that she did uh, like how she made her money was that she did like check cashing scams. So she <laughs> would, you know, get the checks out of the mailboxes, wash them, alter them, doctor them however she needed to, um, and then have people go to banks and cash them for her. Okay. Um, so I imagine she sets up something similar here. Um, using her brother as the face for that, cool. so you know it can happen during banking hours. Okay, yeah, and, <laughs> and like I, and like I said, um, the uh, people in the movement who sort of facilitated this transfer, um, mm -hmm. they did some massaging. So you have some people, you have some mm -hmm. names that you know, mm -hmm. like that you have some phone yeah. numbers and some names, and some email addresses of mm -hmm. people who are basically here to here to help you with the transition. So you're very easily able to have a few quick conversations with people. Your your demeanor is more than enough to, to make people realize that you're not someone to be fucked with. Yeah. Um, so with a few terse conversations, you're able to set up that scam pretty easy. Nice. Um, yes, that's, yeah, that's pretty much all she has to set down roots wise because most of her other backgrounds are mobile <laughs> and <laughs> gotcha. are attached directly to her fair enough fair enough um so one thing i want to discuss real quick then is mm -hmm. an, is your other touchstone reagan mcnally yes so why don't you tell me a little bit about who this person is Okay, so Reagan is a um, former foster sister of Cadence's um, mm -hmm. uh, for the viewers because they don't have this background information. Um, Cadence spent most of her life um, in the foster care system. It was not a pleasant experience. And uh, Reagan was a younger foster sister who um, she caught their foster father having inappropriate relations with beat foster dad to a bloody pulp and never saw reagan again and uh as cadence was by then in a juvenile incarceration facility um so she uh found out that reagan is now a grad student in atlanta and so her uh 
alternate motivation for coming here was to see what happened to this okay. kid who she has fond memories of. Okay, so Kay, so Reagan doesn't know you anymore. No, she, well, she, yeah. The last time Caden saw Reagan, Reagan was like five or six years old. So okay. she might maybe recognize her or think she looks familiar if she saw her. But you don't, you don't have any contact with her. No. Yeah, you're estranged. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, so you set up your little scam. Um, Thank you, man. Uh, I'm assuming you check up on her. Oh yeah. At some point. Definitely on her free nights, you know, wander by, you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, she she goes to uh, Agnes Scott, okay. uh, which is a local women's college. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, it's a little tricky um, because. You, you're not certain, uh, you know, you probably have to, you either have to go a uh, fairly securitous route, uh, mm-hmm. or, uh, to avoid cam territory. Cause it's, it's in, it, it's, okay. I, I'll have to check. I think it's either in cam territory or very close to cam territory, but you're able to see her. Uh, okay. like you're able, you're able to like see her, she's out at a, out at a, uh, like a street side cafe when you track her down and she's talking with a, one of her classmates mm-hmm. and she seems fine. Yes. Cause Kane's just, she's really curious, like what became of this girl and who like had such a terrible thing happen to her. Um, and you know. Yeah. Basically, like, try to see who she is, like, what type of person she's become. So if she can eavesdrop on that conversation, she would, um, but it's also something she can do at another time. Yeah, like, I, I will say that where she is right now, in terms of when mm-hmm. you were able to find her, she's in cam territory. Okay. So it's it's probably one of those things, like, you were on a MARTA bus, mm-hmm. uh, which is, uh, MARTA is, our, is the Atlanta's uh, mass transit system. And, like, the bus passed by, and you saw her. And she was, she seemed fine. Anyway, Madison. Totally just clicked Lord of the Rings online when I was trying to click back on Discord. Okay, sorry. Uh, (laughs) Sorry. It's okay. Um, So, I'm going to be going uh, along my previous plan of, first of all, finding out the legal status of this place Mm -hmm. and doing what needs to be done to ensure that the legal status of this place is, you know, legally owned by my mask identity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's my primary. You and Alex are able to collaborate fairly uh, easily um, and get, getting the paperwork started on that. Um, Like that's going to take time, but yeah, Uh, it's going to take time. uh, And it, it, it certainly doesn't happen right away. Sure. Um, the other big thing I'm doing is pumping influence to start getting a, getting a social map of, you know, what players are playing when the players play in this <laughs> area. Like, uh, are you talking about a mortal? Yeah. I, okay. I want to know primarily what, what's, what's the battlefield look like, regardless of who the actors are. Okay. I just want to know where the pieces are on the board. Now, are you talking about within your domain? Yes. Or Atlanta? That's okay. my All primary right. concern is within our territory. Okay. So, right. So you you are able to put your ear out to the ground and figure out what's up here. Um, you know, looking at a map, Cabbage Town is right next to downtown, and like maybe a mile away uh, from the Capitol building. Mm-hmm. So while it's not necessarily, it's not it it is not in and of itself like a a very fancy or, uh, you know, high income area, it's close enough to have significant police presence. Um, and Reynoldsville, which is to the, is to the east, slightly less so, but in general, these two neighborhoods are, they're low rent, but they have sort of an arty reputation. Like there's lots of murals on the walls. There's lots of cafes and bars. Um, you know, there's lots of art studios, um, and a lot and lots of of houses actually. A couple apartment complexes, a couple of houses. Um, 
you know, a lot of government workers work, live in this area, um, which there's an air of desperation going on, actually, because that means a lot of people in this area are not working right now. I'm going to maybe try to organize some little benefit or something for, you know, people who are currently out of work. Like a lot of, a lot of places are like giving out a free meal once per day to people who have government IDs or whatever. Like I'll find some, some locally owned restaurant that is willing to, to cooperate with me and I'll bankroll that or whatever. I have three resources. So I'm you pretty do. sure. Yeah. You're, you're able to set that up fairly quickly. Uh, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming like the exterior of the, of the, of the Haven gets scrubbed and like oh, yeah. repurposed. Yeah. So are you having this benefit at the Haven? Um, I don't think it's, legally ours yeah the paper was in motion so you're holding it at yeah, fuck it then good enough it's georgia so okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah i so... mean that uh, in accordance with my plan mm-hmm. making this a a location of importance to the community then yeah probably it will be a like a you know kind of like a, a soup kitchen for government employees rather than just homeless people yeah no that that gets set up pretty easily uh and you um come on down bitch about it have mm-hmm. some food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, after about like two days of that, uh, you uh, get a visit from someone uh, who has some some official uh, some official paperwork. Uh, like uh, he's basically like a, a, an inspector for um, you know philanthropic and and charity and at works in the city, um, and he just looks around like. Uh, is it's basically during one of the evenings, like it's like the last shift, because a lot of this happens during the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so you like actually you bring in, you actually employ some government government employees to like make it happen. Um, Fine with me. Uh, but yeah, so like in the evening, there's there's a guy who comes die and like kind of kind of gives it a look over, and he has sort of an official bearing to him. There's no real confrontation that happens in it, but it's a your 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 bureaucracy sense twinges a little bit when you, when you see this guy. I mean, anyway, yeah. I'm so, gonna... yeah. Huh? Any any further uh, workings that you want to do? Gonna make sure that guy isn't gonna fuck me using my politics influence, but otherwise, I think that's pretty much a week worth of work for me. Okay, noted. All right, Willow, you have a lot of people. Oh yeah. So is Andrew? Ooh. Hmm? Had, uh, someone just left, but um, has Andrew Uh-oh. come back? From uh, his... yeah, yeah. Your people. Or he's finally flown in. Yeah, he's all of truck. all of your people over the course of you know these past couple of days, like basically by the weekend, are in Atlanta. Um, you know, Excellent. most of them are kind of in hotels right now while they're settling their living situations. Mm-hmm. Um, apologize, stream. We're having to. That oh, was Dylan that got, that left. Ah, there he is. But yeah, so definitely want to meet with Andrew. Like, I'm sure he has, like, or he, like, since he's come back, he's looking at locations that want to buy. And so Mm -hmm. he's gone to different ones, taking pictures. We're in a hotel room. He's showing them to me so we can figure out which one we want, which location we want. Okay. uh, Because he, he kind of has to do yeah, he's he's he does he's the legwork yeah. on this sort of thing. Yeah, he's 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 the face. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times, anytime something needs to be bought, anytime you know someone needs to be there during the daylight hours to <laughs> sign on a line, Andrew's there. And so I'm meeting with him and you know going through papers, making sure everything lined up. So... And I'm also looking at local security like places with the interest of buy- just buying <laughs> gotcha uh, yeah that's there's a very easy way. indeed it is uh what so for for the location what type of building are you looking for because there's a lot of in cabbage town specifically and in reynolds town there's mm-hmm. a lot of like old houses that can be bought and repurposed for business areas there's also mm-hmm. strip malls um, you know, there's, there's, there's not many office parks, um, um but yeah. there's a couple. 
Well, you said that Cabbage Town and Reynoldsville are not dreadfully far from the capital. They're not. So, I feel like even if we were to be in one of those... Because uh, I know, like, around where I live, that's pretty close where there's like historic buildings mm -hmm. like in a part of town where they can't tear them down but oh yeah there's lots there. of those and so they're just like office buildings but they look like tiny houses so if we were to set up in there that would be acceptable I mean, if willow yeah. feels like it's secure and she feels like it's in a neighborhood that people with money would see and go oh yeah <laughs> you're able to sign. you're able to get a place that's that's um basically on the western edge of cabbage town uh it's an old okay. it's it's one of those old historical houses uh that can't be torn down like you said um and it's so like you can literally see the golden dome of the capital uh from your house uh so it's close enough that you know people yeah. from downtown and area it's not it's not like they're going into cabbage town they're like cabbage town adjacent uh, but it's close mm -hmm. enough so that, you know, the kindred politics don't get inter inter interfere with it. Uh, right. But yeah, you're able to establish that. It's like a nice, like, two floors and an attic and a small basement kind of kind of deal. Um, it's kind of on a hill, on a small hill area. Because yeah. Atlanta is still, is, has some hilly places to it. But yeah, you're able to get that set up. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, there's a lot of... There's a lot of government adjacent bill, uh, businesses that are falling on very sudden and very like hard times right now. Mm -hmm. um, like you know security security companies that you know do a lot of federal work. Yeah. Uh, you know that ha have been cut off from their revenue stream for about a month now, uh, yeah. and that is able to be a fairly persuasive situation to scoop one of them up and sort of use them as the guts of things. And like I said, you're, you've are you got some sort of low-key background help from the Anarch movement to yeah. facilitate all of this. Um, yeah, I, have a lot of, I have a lot of money and I have revenue because this is a, it's a brand in California. Mm -hmm. and yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it over, it's able it's just, to, you're, you're able to grease those wheels and get things up it's kind of it's kind of lucky uh in a way that you know there's this this tension with the federal government uh yeah. right now that's able to on multiple fronts allow you guys to slip in mm -hmm. um people are distracted right now there's a lot going on indeed there is so any sort of uh hostile takeover uh no it's welcome mm-hmm Maybe yeah. not so hostile. Uh, but yeah, I take care of all of that. And I probably spend that week busy with all that, making sure uh, Maria is set up because I want to also use wherever she lives as a secondary haven. Mm -hmm. uh, i definitely the type of paranoid that I would set up a haven for oh, yeah. this one. And then also at that building in the attic, probably. I dig it. I like it. Like yeah. sunproof the shit out of it, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> All of this is handled by your care. The stuff on your character sheets. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Alex, I actually we have a, a a little bit of unfinished mechanical business that we need to go over uh, that we didn't do specifically with you, um, as far as the domain uh, dots. Uh, now. The other characters basically uh, put uh, two dots in each of the areas, uh, which are uh, Chasse, which is the... I'm, I'm mangling that, I know. Uh, which is the... Um, Uh-oh. Son of a bee! <laughs> oh, heck. Heckin Son of a biscuit! <laughs> Gosh dang it! Yeah, right. he's back. He's back. Oh golly, what the fuck was that? He's having a Malkavian <laughs> moment. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, Chasse, which is basically the 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 sort of low key local feeding situation, um, and then there's Lean, which is your uh, integration into the area, how easy it is to to make things happen, uh, 
and then there's Portillion, which is the general security of the domain. So like I said, the rest of the players have put two dots in each of those. You have two dots that you can put into the into those pools. Well, the fun thing is that I lost everything that you said after my name. Um, so <laughs> what are the pools again? Just real so, quick. So real quick, there's like I, and I'm I'm mangling the pronunciation of all of these. Uh, there's chasse, which is your 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 hunting. Uh, how good yeah. of a hunting ground it is. There's lean, which is how integrated into the domain and how easy it is to to sort of make manipulations into the mortal politics of the of the domain proper. And there's portillion, which is the security of the domain. So right now those okay. those three are at two, two, and two, and you have two dots to contribute. Um. So uh, I'm gonna put one into um lean and one into portillion um and okay. the way that i'm doing that uh so alex is uh h- how many resource dots does alex have uh he has three dots of resources okay um so what he is going to do is he's going to talk to sedition friends and he is going to set up it kind of on the down low like not really attached to anybody's name not really like very specifically it is it is going out of its way to not be noticed um and what it is is all of your know, famous people have these you know they have needs they have mm-hmm. they need drivers they need contractors to move stuff around they need uh security uh and he is specifically going to set up a a a group with his other you know, sort of C-list celebrity friends where they hire out of work governments or government contractors, but they do it as those people are full-time employees with the understanding that it's a right to work facility. So once once their jobs kick back in, they'll be summarily let go, but they will have healthcare and um, a modest income during the shutdown. Okay. Um, and yeah. he specifically wants to do this with these other friends of his in a way that doesn't get huge national attention. Yeah. Yeah, like a lot like they people have their their privacy to maintain. Um right. So yeah, uh I I could I would see that there's there's definitely a possibility for the things that you're up to and the things that Willow are up to to have a little bit of overlap. Overlap. Um yeah. Yeah, so I would think que- so, yeah. The question is, do you guys communicate and collaborate uh A first enough to realize that or B do you actively work together well, on that basically alex's stance on this is going to be that this is my gang now mm-hmm. uh, he is not going to be hiding any of this from people he's going to mention it he's actually going to mention it to madison because i don't think that alex realizes that willow is rich no he... because she does not behave or dress like a rich person yeah madison is definitely like a relentless coordinator to like almost the point of it being kind of annoying <laughs> like, like every every three or four hours, it's like, how's everybody doing? Everything good? Like, right? Like, so, let's sync up. Let's have a stand up. Like, oh no! Is and everyone on the just, Slack? Just like, shut up, Dad! <laughs> is everyone on the Slack? Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> let's funny. definitely set up a Slack. Um, yeah. So, so basically, if if Willow happens to hear that and say, hey, th- you know, we could cattail some of our projects, um, Alex is totally down. Mm. Um, it's it's important for Alex that whatever happens, that his fame not be attached to it because he yeah. feels like if his fame gets attached to it, it's going to lose the actual message. Yeah, uh, that's completely understandable. All of my stuff is done through Prox, and so if your involvement doesn't have to have your name ever. You know. Well, I mean, the only the only thing is that these people are going to be hired to do stuff for my for my companies, but also for other musician friends of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's gonna it's not gonna be clear who's bankrolling this. It's gonna come out. It's, that that is the nature of these things. Yeah. But what I would prefer to happen is when it comes out that somebody mysteriously has hired these people. Nobody's really sure who did it. And 
it, it never really needs to be known. It's it's a mysterious it's, benefactor with a mysterious bank account gets it. We can. Yeah. And if you I'm, know, I'm one hundred percent sure that one of my asshole famous friends will claim credit for it. So that's fine. Oh yeah. And you know, if that means that some you know some secure like some like rent a cop cars come through the area more often and keep an eye on trouble. Uh, yep. Or you know that you know whatnot, then you know, hey. And that's that's where the portillion is 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 mm-hmm. uh, expanded, and then the lean is expanded just by the money that is pouring into this neighborhood. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So, um, yeah. So that. And like 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 you said, so Madison's doing all this coordination, and and you know Willow and and Alex, you know there's a lot of a lot of a lot of hands going back. Meanwhile, Cadence is being a gang girl. Cadence Honest, is like, yeah, I want to hang out. Well, with this, see, man. see, they're doing all of the important high level stuff, mm-hmm. which is important. But when it comes time for us to slum it, I'm gonna be your go to girl. Yeah. So, you know, she has her niche. And she's fine with letting you guys have hers, and I'm fine with letting everyone have their niche. Excellent. Oh, yeah. All Can right. I make a suggestion for Cadence? Sure. Not a single one of us has done any work to get familiar with this area. Um, that yeah. might be a good thing for the game world to do. That yeah, be- actually casing the neighborhood, okay. um, getting a feel for where people hang out, what types of people hang out where. Um, especially the ones people tend to overlook, you know, like people who would, you know, come to all of the services that Madison and Alex are setting up, people who are homeless or, you know, out of a job or, you know, just hanging around being lesser than tend to be noticed. Yeah, like, I, I see, like, Madison's doing a lot of, like, the high level getting to know the area where Cadence is walking the streets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Definitely. and yeah, you, you get to know the area. I mean, it's it's not a, I, well, like I said, it's not a bad area of town because of its proximity to, so, like, the really good areas of town and, like, the well-protected areas of town. But it's not, like, a, su- it's not a super nice area of town. Yeah. There's lots of houses, there's lots of houses. Like, that. that's one of the things that you really note, is that, like, once you get away from the major thoroughfares, um, it's, very it's not even, like, it's not even like neighborhoods. It's just streets with houses on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, occasionally you have like a apartment complex or a small strip mall. Um, are they well maintained or are some of them looking like they're on their way out? It's a mix. Some of them are, you know, lived in and well maintained. Uh, others of them look a little run down. Um, it's, you know, there's there's areas where people can fall through the cracks uh, and there's areas where, you know, people are living their lives just fine. Okay. But yeah, you, you kind of, you, you spend a good couple of nights pacing the area, um, you know, getting some, getting some money from, from your cash from, from your cash scams. Um, can you please like redecorate the Haven like a little bit? Yeah. Something. If no, you want definitely. Cadence to be in charge of redecorating the Haven, she's fine with that. I'm not, not saying bad. it's the best choice, but no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I'm very very busy. But can you please get more beanbag chairs? Okay, <laughs> she will. She she will get she will get more comfortable seating. But like her, probably the extent of the decorating she will do is to one take down all the posters, <laughs> leave up like a couple, but like yeah, she, she'll leave up one or two to humor everyone else. But most of them are coming down, and like if you give her some paint, she'll repaint. But yeah. her I, sense of I'll interior decorating whatever, and fun play is non-existent. So here, here's Alexa, order forty transparent floor lamps. <laughs> <laughs> like so, I what I imagine is with Mad with, with, with what Madison's been doing is like those of you who stay in the Haven like wake up one day and it's just completely redone. Yep. Like it's completely redone to be like a community center and like dance, like da- with with a nice dance area and like it's just it's like it, it you you went to sleep one day uh, and it was it was Jesus central. You woke up and it's this nice refurbished area. We just paint over the lead paint. We don't mm-hmm. tell anyone about don't tell it. Anyone you know, about we don't put we don't like crack any tiles because that's where all the asbestos is. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, and the day after that, when you wake up, uh, a really badass professional sound system has been installed. Cool. Can I pay for that? <laughs> okay, we're good. Woo! <laughs> the the techno fairy paid for it. Uh, I Alex, love techno claws. Alex, how how hands on are you with that? Like, do you have someone do that, or do, are you are you uh, are you involved in that? So I'll mostly have one of my sound guys that I trust do it, mm-hmm. um, but there, there he knows that I'm. So like the actual installation of everything, I don't know how to do any of that. Mm-hmm. So I'll just have him do that. Um, but I will definitely be there for like, no, I need this speaker angled this way, and like that's not going to work. That needs to be closer to the floor, and I need this cord over here. So like I'll be there, sort of mm-hmm. monitoring the overall progress. But when he's like, I need to do this to patch into the electrical system, I'll be like, fuck, I don't know, whatever. Well, you you have technology three. Oh, that's right. And I specifically have it because of this. Yo, yeah, I'll be pretty hands on. Okay, be making sure, like, I won't be I won't be fuck, standing whatever, over man, his shoulder. I mean, yes, I do. <laughs> uh, I'll strip the wires, whatever. Okay. So I'm actually going to give you a technology, uh, a, a WIS technology role <laughs> for something. Oh, no, not something. Yeah, it's totally to notice the fucking bugs in the walls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, when you're kind of like going over your like final check of things, you like, you see, you go into one of like the speakers that's in the, uh, one of the older speakers that's like in the ceiling, and you find something there. Well, I'm a whiz when it comes to sound equipment. Is this a microphone? It is, in fact, a, a microphone. Oh, and that's where we're gonna. And, and that is where we're gonna zoom back in. Uh, and like, I'm assuming, like, so you you you're doing this like evening work, like this final check of the sound system. Uh, and about the time you find this thing, uh, is when the three of you other people filter in for like your your weekly. Uh, Stand up meeting. <laughs> Weekly. Uh, so yeah. So you see yeah, Alex. You see board. Alex up on a ladder, like looking up into the ceiling with his hand in the ceiling. You okay up there? I'm gonna just hold my feet, my hand out with my finger extended. Like, give me a second. I'm gonna come down off the ladder. First things first. I'm gonna look at this thing. Is it wireless or is it hardwired into the building? Um. There's a wire coming off of it that's leading somewhere else into the building, but it's not like it's not wired into the into the rest of the system. Gotcha. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come very calmly down to my computer. I'm going to extend the uh, the projection screen, um, and I'm going to type onto a board that everybody can see. The building is bugged. Talk about anything else, and I'm going to start looking for cameras. Okay. Um. Uh... You don't find any cameras. Well, anyway. Cool. I'm going to make sure that we we have a conversation. Yeah, like Madison was just doing it. Let's have that conversation. I wanted to go ahead and sync up on uh, stuff we have been doing to help out all of these people been furloughed. So. So yeah, y'all have basically a, a, a fundamentally meaningless conversation. Yeah. Um, yes, while well, I track yeah. back where that is leading to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. You you sort of you 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 start tracing the wire, uh, and it it uh, it goes to um, one of the ceiling panels uh, on the edge of the building, uh, and it's it's hooked up to a Sega Dreamcast uh, that has this like weird. Uh, connection to a cell phone that's like it has a charger plugged in. Huh. Several questions. Love it. So, yeah, so I know what? a lot about technology and I specifically know a lot about uh, uh, microphone technology. What is the purpose of the Dreamcast in this equation? It's the computer, but it's yeah, it, it is actually a computer. It is actually it is like well you know, yeah I'll let I'll let the roll ride oh right. shit. 
Now let's. <laughs> Willow has a lot of dots in technologies. We were. Yeah. So, IRL. This is an IRL thing. Dylan knows mm -hmm. the Dreamcast basically just runs on Windows CE. Like it's actually just a. Got you. So this is a low tech bug, either because they couldn't afford a high tech bug, or because low tech bugs are a lot harder to notice. Yeah. Not so, bad. are y'all are y'all having this kind of like yeah? So that you you're uh, able over, to over text yes yeah. So yeah, over text you're you're piecing this together. So what are you doing about it? Oh damn. Um, I'll go to the computer and say, uh, leave it in. We can trace or attempt to. Uh, Alex just nods like that. That that is a. That is his intention as well. Um, and he's going to start sort of looking at the cell phone. He's going to be careful not to handle it too much in case that uh, it cuts the connection. Mm -hmm. But does it have an active number on the screen right now? Uh, no, uh, it does not have an active number on the screen right now. It's like um, it's like a proto BlackBerry. Um, so it has an Internet connection. Gotcha. Um so how uh, between um mckenna and alex we should have probably enough technology to try to at least figure out like it clearly this thing is broadcasting yeah if uh, i get my laptop in here uh, this sort of stuff is falls right into my niche and so if i get my laptop we're we're playing we're playing ball so I'm hey, gonna let her do that, and then I'm. In here. We can go over your notes on the program that you've been running. <laughs> I put yeah, up uh, four flyers today. And while <laughs> she's doing that, uh, <laughs> Alex is Alex is gonna stand back. He's gonna recognize that this is her wheelhouse, but he is gonna assist wherever she needs. Okay. So what I'm gonna need from you, uh, Willow, uh, I'm gonna need uh, an intelligence technology roll, and you can add a die from. Alex, we're assisting. And you are still at, I'll say you're still at one hunger. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, during the orgy, actually, so. no, I want everyone to roll, roll their hunger for today. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah. Good. Good call. I'm rolling for you. Pass. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, let me roll. We Gucci. You're good. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Alex, that, you, Alex, you pass. The chortle of happiness. Oh, thanks. Um, so I got four successes. Okay. Yeah. So you, uh, after about maybe twenty minutes, uh, you you are able to do some nineties hacking. Uh, uh, for our purposes, it has nothing to do with actual hacking. Uh, yeah. But you know you're typing on your screen and things are happening and and a user Whoa, interface that has yeah hack the Gibson uh, you know you're routed through Friendster <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're like for so, like like the, the the prodigy is playing as you spin around oh man that movie um, <laughs> anyway so yeah you are able to you're able to get a, get a good um, number on this so you're basically right, saying like yeah this is a microphone that's routed through this this um dreamcast and it is broadcasting over the internet mm -hmm. um and like you're able to sort of you're able to packet sniff essentially okay. um uh and and you're able to tell that this is going uh They've put this on a on a Tor network, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a dark, it's basically going to the dark net. Um, mm -hmm. So it's hard to it's hard to like you have the active connection, which is like a boon. Like you you yeah. are, like that's that's one hundred percent a good thing that you have the active connection still going. Um, so basically, you're able to find uh, you're able to find the 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 site where you're able to find the address of the site that this data is being sent to, but okay. it's being sent to a darknet site, which you don't have access to it. So nope. uh, you, you basically have, at the best, you have a, a user account on this thing, 
Because mm -hmm. um, this thing has... Hang tight that... there, Scott. Yeah, sure. I'd have to get a specialist uh, for that, but good thing Al I know Alex, him. Alex does a fuck ton of drugs. I promise he's got an onion skin account. He absolutely does. Uh, you you probably do the, do, do the Darknet quite a lot. Uh, but, you know, the Darknet is just a series of servers... Uh, mm -hmm. which you don't necessarily have an account on every single one of those servers. Got you. So I don't have access to this particular You don't have access area. to this particular server. But you do have, you can access, with that role, you basically access the user account that you have. And mm -hmm. you basically set up kind of a relay to your laptop. So you see that it is, it performs every six hours a dump of audio data onto this mm -hmm. server. And then it, it, it erases it from the Dreamcast, where it's, it's basically local storage, um, and then keeps keeps listening, keeps recording. Um, over text, or over whatever, we're using to communicate silently. I want to ask Alex, he is the expert about microphones if there's a way to tamper with the microphone that way it sends back a distorted signal that way it's still on but you could chalk up its malfunction due to it just malfunctioning not necessarily are you guys still there ah. yep yeah yeah, yeah. Get, did... uh, I did, I did. And so what Alex is going to respond is, uh, so at this point, we've been in here for a, for a few days, and they, they have heard us talking about the fact that I'm going to be upgrading the sound system. So they are probably already anxious that we're going to find this. So what we're going to do is we're going to just find it, but not know what it is. And we can damage it in the process of doing that. I know exactly how to damage it in such a way where our voices will be recognizable, but unintelligible, and we'll see if they send someone to fix it. Yep. And yeah. so, Scott, I'd like to make the rolls to, to properly damage this microphone so that our voices, again, are recognizable, but largely unintelligible. You can do that. Let me make that roll for you. That's, that's some good thinking right there. Yep. Yeah, uh, you're old hat at this. Uh, you you basically and like you you bring in sort of your 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 low key acting skills into this, um, and you you play out a little scene where you're like oh what the hell is that thing? Oh I think it's a part of this system. Let me uh, let, let me check the wiring on that. And then just there's a short circuit on the microphone, and it's still functional. But it's there's a, so much distortion on it that you're 100% certain that nothing you say is going to be accurately recorded and conveyed. Cool. Before um, I allow us to speak openly again, I'm going to do a thorough sweep of this building to make sure that was the only one. Please. Okay. Let me... Make I'll that help, roll. I'll help him if we have to, because that. Okay. Bad. All right. <laughs> I will. I will add another die for him. Alex. Three, three. Okay. Yeah, you do. Guys, do a thorough sweep, and uh, you don't find anything else. That seemed to be the one thing. Okay. Now I will say that where this was, um, it was um, sort of at the point in the ceiling uh, between the main hall and the back rooms. So mm. it looks like it was placed to sort of hedge their bets as to where it could listen. But Alex, your What's knowledge. What's important to me is can it, could it have listened to the kitchen? Um. That's a good question. Uh, yeah, you, 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 uh, that is pretty much exactly where that mic was, because that's where the kitchen is. Um, and your, your knowledge of microphone, uh, this is actually, this is a multiple thousand dollar microphone. It's incredibly sensitive and incredibly well, well tuned. 
so you're fairly certain that it could have picked up everything and ev all of your conversation in that that kitchen okay so what i'm sort of looking at it and and sort of just paying really close attention to the mic and, and when i'm done when i realize there's no other microphones in the building i'm gonna say so here is the problem uh whoever is listening to this signal 100 percent knows that we are vampires oh yeah yeah uh so my hope is that it's uh, other vampires who are listening. Uh, well, otherwise, we have a huge problem. I mean, it might be the Baron. I mean, you're not going to just throw well, three new people and one guy he doesn't like in a building and think that you're just going to let them roam free, you know? You're not wrong. It is my most desperate hope that it is, in fact, the Baron, and I see a I would definitely see a, a justification in his mind for putting this here. What's the model um, number on that microphone? I read it out to you. It's an... I'm going to look for local retailers that stock that microphone. Okay. <laughs> that's a, that's is, is a good move. Is this too high tier to be a common item that's in stock in various places? Um, It's very high tier, uh, but yeah. Atlanta is the exact type of city that have places that sell this kind of thing uh, on a retail basis. Hmm. Honestly, yeah. but there's not many the... places in the city that do sell it. Or he could have ordered it off the internet. Oh, it should also have a serial number though. If it's the it, ad, uh... it doesn't. It uh, let me make let me make a chance roll for myself. Uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to say so, Madison. Here's the thing: that level of microphone, uh, either there's one of two situations: either the person who installed it is very very wealthy and doesn't care. Or uh, they have registered it with the company because if they haven't registered it, they don't get tech support on it. I just want to know where they bought it from. That's what I'm concerned about. It does have a serial number. Boom. I'm going to assume that's something you guys can, like, track. Well, potentially. Depends on if we want to go the social engineering route or... Well, one thing I can certainly do is I can go to the website of the manufacturer and I can see if the device is registered. And if it is registered with the company, the only thing I will be able to get out of it is probably the email address of the account that registered it, but at least we would have that. Mm, that's that's enough quite a bit more than nothing. Mm. All right. Scott, I'm gonna go on the assumption that, it, like I'm rich and if I buy a $5,000 mic, I register the damn thing. I mean, so yeah. I'm gonna see if these guys uh, thought that way and we'll see what happens. All right, I'm gonna make a make a technology roll because you do have to do a little bit of subterfugious action to do this, but uh, yeah, you you do see that the that the device is registered, um, uh, and like it's a uh, it is a random series of numbers and letters uh, at gmail.com. Mm. <laughs> So, I mean, it's a, it's a garbage account, but I guarantee you that that garbage account is tied uh, and is forwarding messages to a real account because the idea would be if they needed to use this account, they would be forwarding it through several layers. So an idea, I don't know how good it is, but an idea is that we could forward some sort of message that would capture their attention through that account. Okay. So you, we want to let them know that we found it, more or less? There is some merit in calling the bluff. I mean, if well, we really want to rule out that it's not just trans, I feel like considering he gave us semi-important tasks to fulfill, if we ask him if he bugged our hideout, He'd probably just say so, considering the last guy's died. Yeah, I've, 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 I've got to tell you. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know Mr. Tran quite well, and uh, he is going to be an asshole no matter what we do. If he's uh. the one who's bugged it, he's going to tell us that he's not. If he isn't the one who's bugged it, he's going to tell us that he is. So really? uh, I don't think that that option is going to work for us. That said, my actual advice is that we wait and see 
if a service person shows up in the next couple of days to repair something random within the building. Okay. Because that is going to be the actual key. This is a very expensive mic. Whoever's listening really wants to hear what is going on in here. They're going to try to, they're going to try again. And if they don't, then we can go the other round. What's okay. The other route again. Trying to send messages with the email, I think, was what, what he said. Yeah. Basically, we send him an email and say, hey, cockface, we found your microphone. <laughs> I like that one. But, oh. last ditch effort. Best plan. Yeah, let's try the other one first. Uh, Miser. Can you tell how long it's been there, Willow? Yeah, probably. Um, I'd have to check the computer or the Dreamcast. Yeah, uh, it has been there for the past uh, three weeks. Oh. Ooh. You guys and remind me how long we've been here? About a week. That's about when they died. Died. When I when I go into it, I could probably see when anything was installed on that Dreamcast, mm -hmm. especially in regards to software mm -hmm. to take in the sound. If I can tell that, I can tell when it was installed. Yeah, and like I said, it it uh, it, it seemed to ever this this system <laughs> see like based off like the registry entries and and all that other stuff. It, this system has been in operation for about three weeks. Well, this, this does make things interesting because it means that most likely the Savot recognized that Tran would reinstall someone here as quickly as possible and that they've been um, monitoring this site. And it also means that they know that I'm here, which is going to be a problem. So I have a question for everyone. You all were given a uh, ensorcelled map uh, of your domain uh, that uh, had uh, a, essentially a kindred detection system along the yeah. border of I-20. Has anyone yes, I been checking? Hmm? Well, well, my question is, has anyone been checking that map? Absolutely I not. I forgot yeah. that it existed. I Cadence, if Cadence is the one who's actually out patrolling the street, she probably has it on her. Mm -hmm. at any point that it is allowed to be taken with her out of the haven well okay yeah. this is like a uh like this is not a small thing okay all if, right if, if, in, in which case she consults it, it pretty often you know when she gets back when she gets in i'm pretty sure i like hung it up in the main office yeah because yeah. it's just a map. It's not a weird-looking thing at all. Well, if you look too closely at it, you see that, like, in the wood of the frame, there well, are... Right, but we're not going to let people back there for any period of time. Okay. No orgy stuff is happening in the office, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, um, I would definitely say that Cadence does keep an eye on it, if that is her... Okay. If that is her role within uh, the career. I, I will say moment. that at no point from when you started checking it to when it when it ten because what because what it does is basically if there's a if a kindred crosses that line that point in the mark and the map starts to smoke until um, the next until sunrise. the next sunrise and i will say that you've never seen a smoke point on it to date okay mm -hmm. but that was a question i had to ask mm -hmm. okay cool. um so, so I, I have a little bit of a confession to make. Yeah. So it may be something that you're interested to know. Uh, I believe at this point, I, I very seriously doubt that Mr. Tren has uh, not taken the opportunity to let every one of you know about my indiscretions of youth. No. No. No, I had oh. no conversation with him. What indiscretions? That guy seems like an asshole, so I avoid talking to him. I mean, I heard some things, uh, not from him, but from other folks. So you don't actually know why Mr. Trent doesn't like me, do you? I, I, I got a good guess, and, you know, whatever. You don't really get to choose who makes you what you are, so... You're absolutely whatever. right. 
So for those of you who I suppose don't know, I was embraced into the Sabbat. Um, I did escape, but for a period of time, I wasn't a member of the Sabbat. That said, my sire is so very angry that I left. And if the Sabbat is tracking us digitally, that means that the Sabbat has heard my voice in this building, which means that there is at least a chance that my sire knows that we're here. And that is going to become, um, let's say, interesting uh, shortly. Okay, so before we start doing the, the hypothetical what if flip outs, how, like, was Willa, when you, like, cased the joint when we first got here, did you, like, see any evidence that someone had actually broken in at some point? Because this place was on, like, heavy lockdown. So if someone forced the way in, there probably would have been something to, you know, some evidence of it. No, I, when I looked through it the first time, everything seemed very, very secure. I wouldn't I, be surprised if the people here before us would like regularly change law. I, I will say you were given a key to the front door. Ma Madison, like specific, yeah. like Madison and Cadence, when you got here, you yeah. had the key to the front door. It was locked. Nothing seemed to be fine. But consider where you got that key. Mm -hmm. So, so then an, I suppose an... that it's either Mr. Tran or the Sabat who has the other end of it. Now, something else is, what if the previous Coterie put it in? Because we know one of them is still unaccounted for. Oh, yeah. What if yeah. they, and, the, and there was that, that little bug, there's that bug out hidey hole. What if she wanted to keep tabs on the place while she was indisposed? It's a valid theory. I've got my speculations on why one of them is unaccounted for. So? I don't think it's because they got away. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so before we start flipping shit, this is not a shit flipping time. I think we should do what Alex said and wait for a tech person to show up before we, you know, make a judgment call. So Certainly, and let's be clear, I'm not, I'm not necessarily flipping my shit. I don't think that my sire is mega powerful and I'm not terribly afraid of him. ...of chaos he can create for us here. He wouldn't come at me directly. Uh, he would just try to make it as chaotic as possible for us to stay here. That said, I'm not convinced this isn't Mr. Tren. Uh, either way, it's not lovely. I agree. Let's wait and see if either they attack or they send the repairman. All right. Yes. All right. And with that tentative plan, we're going to shut it down for the evening. Uh, everyone gets two XP as per normal. Shut it down. Very much. Um, does anyone have anything they want to announce or uh, plug or anything? We got we guys have your all of your guys' normal projects are in the doobly do, uh, <laughs> and uh, and announce. So please check all that out. Um, uh, does anyone else have anything they want to promote? Um, or... sort of. Sure, go uh, ahead. If you folks like the the little character art thing that's been circling through the overlay, my commission slots just opened up. My rates are extremely reasonable. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> feel free to seek me out uh, and I would be more than happy to uh, take care of any uh, character creation or character imaging needs that you cool. might be interested in. uh make make sure get get me whatever contact information is viable for that and i will make sure that it's in in the everything yep give her your money yeah just give me all of your money uh, all of it mo uh, mo james you guys have anything you want to talk about no nothing new is mm -hmm. happening on duets with dice yet uh yet uh bum, bum, bum. if you're in the As yet uh I'm sorry, as of yet, nothing new is happening with any of my projects, but I should have some stuff to announce by next time. Awesome. Uh, if you're in the Atlanta area, uh, I know uh, Dylan has a LARP that he wants people to NPC for. That's true. If you 
If you like LARPing at all, if you want to see what it's like to NPC for a LARP at a very low entry cost, you're available on March 9th. You can just uh, look on Facebook for a game called 13 Heavenly Blades. Uh, and we are in search of as many warm bodies to come out and play for free while getting three free meals uh, as we can get. So if you're interested in that, just search that up on Facebook and you'll find all the information in the event. That makes me wish I was in Atlanta. I mean, you could come. It's in March. Oh. <laughs> She's got school, man. <laughs> but anyway, I actually have a few things that I want to talk about. Um, first of all, the the Patreon for Simulacra Studios uh, is up and running, uh, and I recently, for patrons, posted all of these Jokers uh, backstories that I have and character sheets. Uh, so if you kind of want to look at uh, what's up, I'm missing one backstory. Looks at the non the screen non screen of uh, of James, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's fine. Um, uh, so yeah, Wait, you don't have you don't have my backstory. No, I don't have your backstory, man. Oh, I, it's been written. I'm sorry. I will get it to you uh, as soon as I get settled in Baltimore. Sure, pop pop it in the dock. Uh, will Baltimore. Do. Yeah, that's where oh, he's yeah, going, so man. I'm driving, I'm, I'm driving from Atlanta to Baltimore. Why? <laughs> Don't tell me. It's oh my god. That's you, you have my deepest sympathies and condolences, my friend. Oh lordy lord. Anyway, so I firmly suggest anyone who's interested in finding more about these guys, finding more about the other campaigns that Simulacra Studios is running and preparing to run, check out the Patreon. Uh, also, something I forgot to mention is I am on a podcast. Uh, it's called Polyhedron. Uh, link in the doobly-doo. It's a general uh, RPG um, discussion podcast. We also do interviews with people in the gaming industry, uh, and we just generally have a good old time, so please check that out if you want to hear more of my weird voice. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's uh, that's what I have to say. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, um, next time... Uh, there's a possibility, a slim possibility, that we will not be able to do game, or it might start late, uh, because I will be traveling from Florida uh, that morning. Uh, but I don't imagine... I'll, I imagine I'll be home in time. I will keep mm -hmm. y'all updated, and the, the fans updated, uh, if that's going to happen, but I don't suspect that's going to be a thing. Uh, but we will be back for part three of Burn It Down, where the players mm -hmm. play. Uh, and oh boy, are we going to have a time next time. Oh, I'm looking forward to it so much. Indeed. Well, Scott, I want to thank you for running this. Oh, you're so welcome. Yes. Thank yeah, you thank for you. playing. You all have such a good time. And thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys for being able to, to work around this issue for me, because I actually had a fantastic time for several hours on this many, many hour trip. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're glad to give you suckers. But anyway, yeah. I'm going to end the stream now. Thank you guys for watching. Please come back next week yes. and check out the Patreon for more information and news. Give all the money to him that you're not giving to me. Oh, yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>